It's a very warm welcome in every sense of the word to the end of the season, or at least getting close to it. Every point now in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship seems that little more important. Just one race to come after the two hours and 40 minutes that we'll see here this afternoon at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca, just off the coast on the Monterey Peninsula, 11 corners, two and a quarter miles. It's a treacherous serpentine piece of tarmac that offers little grip for the tires and a real conundrum for the drivers and the teams. How do you set your car up? Turn two, six, the corkscrew at eight and turn 11, all potential action areas. And we'll be keeping our eyes on all of those throughout the next two and a half, a little more than that hours this afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. It's John Hindorf and Jeremy Shaw in the IMSA Broadcast Centre on the little run between Turn 4 and Turn 5, right in the middle of the track graphic, if you're watching our TV pictures. Our Continental Tire Sports Car, uh, Continental Tire Pit Lane reporter is Shea Adam. Let's check in with her straight away as the command has just been given to start the engines. Perfect timing, John, because you're going to get a lot of beautiful sound in the background. Our cars are rolling off off the grid. Jordan Taylor led everybody up. That's the sound of Jonathan Bomarito's Mazda struggling to get grip as it has to climb the uphill underneath the bridge, following out the safety car. And we are almost to the point where our prototypes have finished rolling. It will be the GTLM cars, eight of them to get a move on before we have 13 GTD cars. And then the pit lane gets nice and quiet. Two pace laps to go before the start of this race. I am pumped up, John. How about you? Tell me about it. This is a place that uh, I always get excited just thinking about coming here. It's one of the longer travels that I have to do from Central England to be here. But you know what? It never, ever grinds to have to do that because I know that once I'm here, I am going to be entertained royally. And that has been the case all weekend with the IMSA Development Series and the partner races and now it's the main event. Jeremy Shaw is alongside me. Our Porsche keys to the race, Jeremy. Grip, not grunt, and don't get tired out at the end. This is all about management of the round black things. Patience is going to be a big key today, mainly because if you push too hard earlier on, you're going to chew up your tyres and you're going to be really struggling at the end of your fuel stint when you come in to... to uh, put on a fresh set of, set of tires and take on a full load of fuel. So you've got to be really, really careful, particularly in the opening stages of the race and each stint of, as the race progresses. Uh, no penalties. Uh, this is not a soccer question. You just can't afford them here. A drive-through is going to cost you a lot of time. That front straight is the fastest part of the circuit, and you don't want to be only doing the pit lane speed limit there. No, it'll cost you about 30 seconds, which is you know, the better part of uh, certainly... 40% of a lap in any case so uh, if you have a penalty and you're more than half a lap behind the leader you're probably going to fall a lap down and it's going to be awfully difficult to make that up these fields are so competitive these days in each of the three categories you've got to be flawless uh, there's some beautiful beaches around here to spend some free time on but here you want to stay off the sand it can easily suck you in and it's right at the edge of the track stay on the gray bits yeah that's the key here stay on the gray bits the uh, the the, uh, the beige or the or the or the gravelly bits now nah, not so good you're going to lose a lot of time uh, uh, apart from anything else so uh, keep it clean and finally don't be fooled by your fuel and by your competitors' fuel levels either. We've seen people stretch tanks here a very, very long way and have their competitors scratching their heads. We've seen people get it wrong by the smallest amount and not finished here. You know, it's, it's incredible. The, the cars of today, I mean, they use every last drop of fuel before they run out, but there's the, the bad news is there's no warning at all. Cars that years ago, they used to give you kind of a hiccup that let you know they're about to run out. And sometimes it, you might get you know, enough time to get into the pit lane and take on more fuel if you needed it. But these cars are so efficient, uh, but, uh, but they do also have very good data on them to, to translate back to the pit lane, uh, how much fuel they've got. So uh, fuel consumption is certainly going to be a factor. You want to keep your pit stops as short as you can. You don't want to put on more fuel you, than you need and, and spend more time on pit lane than absolutely necessary. Uh, so the margins will be fine here, but you've got to make sure you don't overstep those limits. It's Jeremy Shaw. I'm John Hindorf. The cars are going past us for their second formation lap. The next time that they're on the short straight between turns four and five, they'll be at racing speed. 
Well, let's hope they are. And they'll be jostling for position before they turn into the left-hander and start climbing the hill. Getting some positions off the grid here, really important, Jeremy. And you might see some people, particularly those not in championship contention, taking one or two little chances. Yeah, because because of the fact that the, everything is so closely matched, because of the fact that tire degradation is an issue, overtaking is difficult around here, but uh, at the start is a good place to try and make up some ground. So if you can, uh, that's certainly good. But uh, by the same token, again, you know, risk equals reward here. You've got to manage those, the risk and hope that your reward is enough to ops offset any risk. Shea, Adam, everybody get away all right? That's everybody the big question. Everybody got away, uh, right. but then there was an incident on the first lap where the 51, I believe, was not the last car Jeremy had on the grid, was it? Can you uh, No, it shouldn't have been. Um, because it must have spun on the opening lap. John Potter is ahead of it as they came across the start finish line the last time through. Oh, yes, the, uh, the number 44 car uh, should have been behind. They qualified in the order 44-51, but the uh, number 44 car changed tires in GT Daytona. You do have to start uh, the race on the tiles with which you qualified, so he in that should class. have gone to the bank. Yeah, in that class. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy Shaw, John Hindhoff, Shea Adam on the edges of the seats that we would be sitting on if we had them, but we don't. And it's already a crash on the front straight, and it's the, the Action Express number five, and one of the Porsches involved there. They were an in, in, uh, innocent party. Looks like the 99 got hit as well, and the number 911 came along. That was before the green flag even flew. Oh, my goodness. It's taken out some big names already. The number five Action Express car, Joao Barbosa's gone around. The 911 of Nick Tandy caught up in that with nowhere to go as they were accelerating towards the line. And the number 99, Misha Goyt. Oh, the Ford 66 is involved as well. That's Dirk Muller, and that's a championship contending car. And they are going to be dead last. My goodness, it looks like the 911 and Nick Tandy has managed to find a gear and get going. It's damaged. It's Heavily. badly damaged. He's sitting on the left-hand side of the car, and that's good because if he's on the right-hand side, he wouldn't be able to see anything, Jeremy. That right front wing, the front fender, is up in the air, and he's going to try and get that car back to the mechanics to try and get them to get it put back together again. Is that just bodywork, or is there some frame damage? I'm not Ooh. sure. I don't know about frame damage, but uh, certainly like the suspension damage there. That's uh, uh, quite a bit of uh, body work there. It's completely misplaced in that car. That was a disaster. There's no question, I think number five car is out of the race. That was a second place in the championship, just yes. seven points behind their teammates. So this is absolute disaster for them. Also, as you said, Joey Hand, that Dirk Mueller Ford, they were lying just nine points off the championship lead in third position as well. That car is almost certainly going no further this Sh afternoon. Share Shea Adam is down there. There's a lot of debris. It looked as though it was the 99 car of uh, Misha Goikberg who got on the power early and clipped the back of the number five of Joao Barbosa. I don't think you can drive down the front straight. They'll have to bring them into the pit lane. Otherwise, they may have to stop them. This might be a red flag. Let's see what race control decides. They're normally very good on this to make the quick decisions. Poor Nick Tandy was in the pack and it all kicks off ahead of him. People are breaking, and right in the middle of the road, Joao Barbosa left, well, not Joao's fault, but Nick had literally nowhere to go. One of the Fords, it would have been the uh, 67 car, the Dodge to the left, and as that happened, Nick was left with a face full of prototypes, sideways on. Tire and wheel combination rolling down the track from one of the cars. I believe that was from the Action Express, the number five Mustang sampling car. In all of that, Dane Cameron has uh, got the lead, by the way, uh, before the full course caution came out. And Jordan Taylor then in second. So it's accurate from number six, from the number five, from the number 10 of Jordan Taylor. Well, they are going past on the track, but the officials have done a very smart thing. They've pushed everyone over to the extreme right hand side of the circuit. So nobody is running over debris. Very well done. And a quick call to get the intervention vehicles down there to effectively as if you were on a highway to cord off the inside of the circuit and push everyone away from the incident. The initial contact was from the 99 of Misha Goikberg onto the back of Joao Barbosa's car. And the 66, I'm afraid, the Ford, championship contending Ford with Dirk Muller, absolutely nowhere to go. It was a heck of a good start from Goikberg, but really nothing, nowhere for him to go. There was another prototype involved in there as well. I think it was one of the 
Well, it can't have been one of the Acuras. They were further back. So it must have been the core car, was it? Ah, uh, no, it was looking down on a Ford. Ford mm -hmm. looks very much like a prototype from the top. Shea, Adam, let's uh, check in uh, with you, looking at the drivers, and uh, let's check to see how the drivers have fared in that. That's the most important thing. Exactly. Joao Barbosa, who has helped out of the car with the IMSA officials, he got out under his own power and walked over to the safety Cayenne. That's the best news. But uh, the car will go no further. The safety crew is working about pushing it up onto the flatbed. The wheel and tire on the back right of the car is budged up on, this, on the tow truck. It's actually sort of wedged in. The suspension is broken. And there is a ton of shards on the racetrack. All of the car is coming past now. As where's the 10? The 10 dropped back to third, so it's behind both of the Penske cars. Um, there is a lot of Mobile One stuff written on the sides of pieces. It's debris off the number 911 from Nick Tandy. There is a lot of stuff as well from the number 66 forward but there's a lot of debris and a lot of liquid that was dropped down from this number five machine which is now retired debris from the front and the back of this car really scary first lap incident john i'm glad that everyone's okay and uh, the 911 has gone behind the wall Shea Adam with that Continental Tire pit lane report, and she was literally looking over the pit lane there. The, it, the wheel and tire that went for walkabout on its own was from the 66. My apologies. That was the right front ripped clean off with part of the suspension member as well there. Extraordinary right at the beginning. And, you know, you're only getting up to speed there, Jeremy. The energy that is expended, that is by no means full speed as the, the green goes out. It was actually... A really good start by the 99 of Misha Goikberg, who, by the way, is still running. The right front of that car has damaged, but he's still running, and the car actually has fared pretty well. He just tipped round Joao Barbosa in the number five Mustang sampling prototype, and then, from then on, it was like dominoes behind them. It really was, and we, Shay and I were both in the driver's meeting this morning, and uh, the driver and team managers were all in there, and... Uh, the subject of the start came up as it always does and and uh, Bo Barfield was explaining, who's the race director, was explaining to the drivers he wants everybody to, to pack up in side-by-side -side formation coming out of the corkscrew. It's awfully, you can't really go through the corkscrew yeah, side-by-side. Exactly. Side. And he was also said to drivers, look, that's later than we normally would try to, to line up side-by-side. -side. So do the best you can coming down the hill, get yourself side-by-side, -side, and then coming out of the final corner, make sure you maintain the pace car speed and don't try and jump the start. Uh, now, there were a few people there who were kind of, you know, lagging a little bit and then trying to get a run. And that's really what caused that incident there and uh, most unfortunate. Uh, the recovery continues. Shea Adam will get an update from her on the number five Action Express Mustang sampling Cadillac in a moment. I can tell you that the Ford, uh, without that right front wheel, which is... Uh, uh, has uh, made its bid for freedom on the front straight. That car is being recovered at the moment. How's things going with the Cadillac and the rest of the cleanup? Shea Adam has this Continental tyre. Well, front straight update rather than pit lane update. Leaf blowers are being utilized to try and get the carbon shards off of the racetrack. Great and idea. the cars are being a bit more adventurous. This time through, they have run four wheels on the racetrack instead of two wheels on, as they had been doing. They're not exactly should be doing that, though, because as one of the Corvettes just ran over a giant piece of carbon and the two behind them decided to move further off the racing line, there's still a lot of cleanup to be done down here. And, John, there's actually bits of the safety foam from the front of the Porsche that was kicked up and is over over the wall now so that was just gives you an indication of how hard the hit was uh, just to reiterate that 911 Porsche did go behind the wall Nick Tandy did get the car back around uh, the pits are not going to open here this has been called as a short yellow because it was so close to the start of the race but the prototype class split still does happen so all the prototype cars will line up ahead of all the GT Le Mans cars which should all be ahead of the GTD cars the GT Le Mans field now down to just six and I reckon you will see that Porsche if at all possible come out and just do a couple of laps if nothing else Jeremy to to make sure that they get extra points for uh, that car and uh, potentially 
push the 67 further down the rankings. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter. They're, they're not really in the championship chase, the uh, number 911 car, but the uh, 66 car most definitely is. And for Joey Hand, of course, from Sacramento, California, uh, a lot, a ton of family and friends here this weekend. He's not even going to drive the car, so it'll be a heartbreak for Joey Hand. They know they've got a fast car here. The car, has, the Ford GT has won here. That was the, the car's first win. Uh, was here a couple of years ago, and he's going to take no further part in a race. No, but the, their team car is only nine points behind that Ford in the championship. So if they can take a point or two out of that car, they may help their team mates in the in the drivers' championship run. I, 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 well, we'll see what happens. It was a pretty good lineup, actually, as they came out of the, the final corner. And it was the lightest of touches from Misha Goikberg onto the left. A huge moment for the 9 1 2, uh, which was started by Earl Bamba, who was confronted with the front suspension assembly and the right front Michelin tyre on the wheel rolling across the track in front of him. And he somehow avoided it. His teammate wasn't so lucky. Nick Tandy with nowhere to go, with Schwab Barbosa having been spun around right across the track the ford hitting the spinning barbosa car and ripping the right front corner asunder very close to one of the patron esm cars and how they didn't get involved in it i don't know there'll be a lot of drivers shaking their head there thinking how did i get through that yeah indeed that was a really scary moment there and uh, just a tremendous shame for this race here comes another five car past us on the flatbed and uh, there's a lot of damage to that car you know it was really a case of i mean that the the leaders the front row guys came out of the final corner and uh, what i've got to presume they were running the same speed that's what they're told to do maintain uh, uh, pace car speed until they see in the green flag and then they go but some of the other guys were coming off that final corner and clearly got a big run on the cars in front trying to, trying to kind of steal the march on the opposition Dicker number 99 car there was on the throttle perhaps uh, rather more than he needed to be. The green wasn't out, I believe, at that stage. So um, the, the stewards are going to be looking at that. And it was just uh, an unfortunate sequence of events that happened thereafter. But certainly there was much more of a gap be between some of the rows of the grid than that the race stewards would have liked as they came around that final corner. Well. And then it was kind of a, a pack-up. Uh, as everybody sort of slowed down because they came f flying out of the final corner, realised the leaders hadn't gone yet, so had to sort of, had to sort of back off the throttle, whereas other guys were trying to get a run. In a masterful piece of understatement to at IMSA Radio, Jackie Warnock, hello Jackie, uh, listening and watching in Australia, has said, well, that hasn't gone so well, has it? No, yeah, indeed yeah. not. Uh, we are already more than 15 minutes or just on 15 minutes into this race and we've not had a racing lap here now the others first of all looks like all the drivers are okay the cars will be fixed it's going to take some time but that's the good news the interesting point is what this does to strategy and tactics and those numbers will be being looked at right now by the strategists who have brains the size of planets and they will be working through their spreadsheets. They'll have the calculators out. They'll be asking their guys to save fuel behind the safety car, turn everything down that they can do, and get themselves ready to push as long into this race as they possibly can, because it might just, having had almost 15 minutes of caution, it might just open up a very different strategic opportunity for some of these teams. 67, the remaining Ford, smoking just a little bit for Ryan Briscoe from the overflow on the right rear of that car. Not the first time we've seen that. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean there's an issue, but they are going slowly behind the Lexus safety car at the moment. This race will, for the prototypes is very definitely a, a three-stop race unless there's a lot of caution periods. Uh, but the interesting thing is, uh, the cars can do the prototypes can do about 45 minutes around here perhaps a little bit more than some of the other tracks because it's not as high speed as some of the other venues we go to particularly road america uh, last time out for the prototypes so uh the the interesting thing is here with tire degradation being so big here i.e the, the tires lose a lot of grip the cars lose speed as the uh, as the race goes on there is certainly a likelihood here that some of the teams might want to 
normally it would be it would be two full stops uh, and and the and the the final stop wouldn't you wouldn't need a full tank of fuel correct but the propensity here is for the teams to kind of equalize the stint through the race in order to make sure their tires don't have to do too many laps uh so that's certainly going to there's going to be something that Point. is a factor the lights on the lexus safety car have been extinguished what we've got to watch out for now remember the pits have not been open at all and will not be open for general use until a full lap of green has been completed so even if you do want to come in at the moment the pits are closed so you cannot and the worry from the teams will be uh, watching those pressures in the tires the lexus safety car takes off in front of the two acuras now six and seven so the field has been reset Dean Cameron, Helio Castro Neves, and then Jordan Taylor, our pole sitter. He'll be annoyed with the fact he got jumped by not one, but both of the Acura Team Penske cars. Two hours and 26 minutes to go. We've lost a bit of racing, but now we try for the second time to go green at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. The green flag is in the air, and this is a much cleaner start, at least from the front of the field. They were line astern rather than side by side, of course, single file. Five, uh, five rather than uh, double file restart and already a problem for Catherine Legg in the 86 and there's been more incidents and the turn of BMW is off the side of the road just coming to the green flag the 96 car in the liquid molly colours and Justin Marks the 93 Acura has got damage Catherine Legg shuffled back to fourth position when she came past us in GTD remember she started on pole in GTD at Turner. Justin Marks able to see underneath. Well, this has been chaos at the start of these, these two restarts. There's all kinds of passing going into the final corner because the green has been called. There's all kinds of overlap. There was a touch from Justin Marks onto the Lexus, uh, onto the 14 Lexus. The 15 car just got around the outside. Jack Hawksworth using some of his single-seater experience there at restarts maybe to pick a line through what was going on. And we've gone back to full course yellow. A bit of a farce, it has to be said at this stage. Uh, just Come on, just lads people, and lasses, people being get to greedy. the first corner. Yeah. People being greedy is, is basically what that comes down to. Um, yeah, the, the thing I did about it say is, the people want to try and make up positions before and the I, start, I, I, and, and they, that's clearly putting a lot of pressure on the drivers. It, it is, you're absolutely right. Uh, and also being patient, which, which a lot of them weren't. Look, the, the, one of the problems there is the fact that uh, as soon as a green flag comes out and we can see it w waving quite it's, clearly, it's waving. Then, then you're allowed to make passes. That's the problem because the GT cars, oh. GTD cars weren't yet at the final corner, so they are free to make a pass if they, if they can into that final corner. Uh, and uh, I'm sure a group, few guys kind of weren't were either... Yeah. Well, it was it was a mess. Patrick Lindsay did very well to avoid that in the 73 Park Place car. We've got some pit callers. I'll give you uh, those in the moment. Justin Marks come into a closed pit, but obviously nothing else he could do. Right, I'm going to take back what I said about the 14 Lexus, which got spun around. He didn't get a push. He fell off the track. And the 14 cars got damaged to the right-hand side under the door where the exhaust is and uh, that's the issue for that car but it was dropping off I said don't go and play in the sand and Kyle Marcelli just overdid it on the exit of the final corner coming to the restart and slid sideways and at that point he was losing time now the race control officials are looking at the start and the restart I'm led to believe we'll get back to you if there's any penalties arising from that Catherine Legg confirmed having dropped from Paul to fourth position and Madison Snow our championship leading Lamborghini driver for Paul Miller Racing along with Brian Sellers is in the lead let's run down and let me give you a Cadillac in race update as the 93 of Justin Marks is going behind the wall that's the Acura Dan Cameron leads his teammate Elio Castro Neves the six and seven Acura team Penske cars are ahead of the pole sitter Jordan Taylor in the number 10 Cadillac then it's the two Mazdas, 55 and 77, Bomarito and Oli Jarvis. Sebastian Saavedra is next up for the first of the Global P2 cars. The 52 Origa in sixth position. Let's go into GT Le Mans. Six are remaining 
and it's the Chevy Corvettes four from three. Oli Gavin and championship leading Jan Magnussen ahead of Earl Bamber, who made a cracking start and picked his way through the melee and somehow avoided cars spinning, bits of cars, wheels going off in front of him. He's up into third ahead of Alexander Sims for the first of the BMWs, which is the black car, and then the 24 of Jesse Krohn behind him and the 67 Ford, uh, which was smoking a little bit, is down in sixth position into the pit lane and be ha has entered a closed pit but hasn't come to its pit stall. So may get away with that one. They haven't done any work. So this is Eric Curran has entered a closed pit. This is our championship leader in prototype. So this is effectively self-penalising in the Stars and Stripes wheel and number 31, so not a good day. They must have been expecting the pits to be opened, and they weren't. There's a, a little LED screen. I'll get back to the Cadillac in-race update at the moment. They've ha he's had to wait now for the whole field to go yeah. by and some track vehicles, but he'll get back onto the back of the field of cars. And he stalled it now as well. Uh, in GT Daytona, Lamborghini 48, Mercedes number 33, Pat Long in the Porsche, the right motorsport number 58 car in third. Then Catherine Legg in the pole sitting Acura. There'll be no pass around, we're hearing from race control. Yeah, there's no need for that because so all of the cars that are out there are all on the same lap, as it, uh, otherwise they're in the pits. Top six in GTD made up by the Ferrari of Cooper McNeil and the Porsche of Patrick Lindsay, 63 and 73. It's the two Acuras that lead. Two hours and 20 minutes to go. Actually, Cadillac in race update. We've had about... A lap of green if you add all of the bits together barely oh, no not even really because yeah. the yellow was pretty much out right away no, it didn't we didn't quite see how the uh, both of the Acuras managed to get past Jordan Taylor at the start uh, from Michael Shanks PR account the 93 is retired official retirement for Justin Marks and the 93 Acura the uh, black marker of doom if you've got the Andy Blackmore spotless guide there the, yeah. that, that can be the line through that one, I'm afraid. Justin Marks and Lawson Ice, fact, they've had no luck at all this season. Now, we are going to get the pit lane opened this time around for prototypes and GT Le Mans cars. I should think there'll be some takers. They haven't used a lot of fuel, but I, I'll guarantee that there'll be people who want to put a new set of tyres on those cars. Shit, Adam has a Continental Tire pit lane update. And this is an update from the pit lane this time, not from Carnage on the front straight. I'm still standing in the same spot, but yeah, there are different cars in. We have both of the ESM Nissans have come in. There is a driver change going on. Pippo Durrani is getting in the 22. So this is an early driver change, and uh, that will be relevant. They are doing a new nose on the number 99, the Red Dragon, the Gainesville Red Dragon. Severe right side damage to that car now that I'm able to see it up close. The number two ESM machine still has Scott Sharp behind the wheel. New tires for them and the 52, the P here are one Matheson Motorsports running with an Orica this weekend. A new car for them. The number 912 has come in. Earl Bamber has a new set of boots to go out and play with, so he gets a new set of Michelins. That is the sound of the Red Dragon coming back out of the pit lane and trying to play nicely with the 22. The red light is on at the pit exit. The 85 has blown it, so the other JDC Miller Motorsport car is sitting well up the pit lane. Can't even see the pit exit light from his vantage point. The number 31 Whalen Engineering Cadillac is making its stop right now. And as a result of that number 85 going so far beyond, it has to wait until all the other cars are cleared to leave, which they now do. And the 85 joins in the tail end. And the 31 is doing their pit stop. It looks like they did a driver change. I think Philippe Nazar is behind the wheel of that car. And new Continental stickers on the 31. Yeah, thanks, Shea. The drive times for uh, 10 minutes for the prototypes and GT Le Mans who've been in, unless... Of course, you are looking for the Truman Aitken uh, Awards in prototype. Then you've got to do 30 minutes. For everyone else, it's 45 minutes. Right. And that's uh, and the, the main one there would be John Bennett in car number 54 before he hands over to Colin Brown. Yeah, Misha possibly as well in that uh, scenario. So Yeah, I think Misha will stay out uh, yeah. longer than that. You, you want to get some driving in, but... Uh, We'll open the pits for the GT Daytonas next time around. Sound and vision together on IMSA Radio and IMSA TV, live from trackside at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca for the 100 and uh, the uh, two, two hours and 40 minutes of 
racing we were hoping for already yeah. down to two hours and 17 minutes and yeah really uh, irritating yeah it's and, and last year john we had, there was only just the, the one caution one period caution. last season yeah so one caution unfortunately we're making up for it cautions breed cautions is the usual cliche yes, but it there was there was no caution this time it was well re start caution and restart. To the wind. oh very good <laughs> caution to the wind very good jeremy that that's you've just written somebody's headline for them down there in the uh, in the press room hello to the ladies and gentlemen of the press already tippity tapping some of their quotes and stories i'm sure after incident and accident has blighted the first 25 minutes of this uh, of this particular race. Let's uh, go down to Shea, Continental Tire Pit Lane update. We do have some takers from GT Daytona. Fuel only for John Potter in the number 44 Magnus Racing Audi. They are doing fuel and tires for the Turner Motorsports BMW. No driver change, Bill Oberlin staying in the car. They're gonna do a little bit of damage assessment while the car is in. There is a driver change going on for the number 33 Riley Mercedes as Jerome Bleak Mullen wasting driver time as he is behind the safety car. They're putting Ben Keating in now and he loves this track. And in the number 15 Lexus, they have done fuel and a new set of tires. The red light is on at the pit exit, of course. And the Magnus Racing Audi first in line followed by the 33 Mercedes, now gets the clear go-ahead. The Lexus timed it perfect, and the 96 just now leaving. But, John, you had a better view of that stop? Yeah, they were doing some uh, remedial work to the right front of that car. They have uh, some blue tape on that car. That's come out of uh, being turned around pretty good, other than a bit of a ding on the uh, right rear of that car. But the bodywork and, crucially, the aerodynamics are on that GT Daytona number 96, the Liqua Molly car, that looks like it's actually not fared too badly uh, after that go at the restart. It all started uh, on the original go to the run to green with Misha Goikberg tapping the back of Joao Barbosa, turning him across the track where he was hammered by the Ford GT, ripping the right front off that Ford. And then it was all kinds of chaos behind with people having to move around on the restart. The number 14 Lexus getting sideways, having gone off the track onto the dirt. And that caused a backup and some issues behind for various cars. They've picked their way through it. It's been cleaned up and the class split is happening again. Yes, few indeed. Uh, we've burned 35 minutes of racing without really having any kind of action. Uh, Earl Bamba, by the way, has dropped out of position, still six, sits in sixth place in GT Le Mans, but has dropped behind quite a lot of the GTD field. Uh, that's because he was the car that came into the pits there. Right, but there will be a class split again before we go back to green, so he'll be able to uh, move on to the tail end of the GTLM cars. And that is ongoing at the moment on the start-finish right. line. Looks like one These or two, two people. Oh, there's a little nudge there yeah. up behind the safety car These between two. the 99 of Misha Goikberg. And who's the first of the... Scott it's Sharp. It's Scott Sharp. Yes, there's but certainly something going on yeah. there. Well, they came out of the pits and they, they over, each of them decided, has, has obviously reckons he was ahead of the other one when they came out of the pit lane so they're arguing that uh, there's no need no, no need for this now the, the stewards will look at it they will make a determination and the uh, the, the order will be set by the stewards there's no point in taking the uh, the uh, matters into their own uh, hands exactly and they've touched and there's a piece of carbon fiber has been knocked off one of the cars this is behind the safety car it's pathetic quite frankly unbelievable and now the two has clearly been Told to go ahead, has he? I don't know. Shit, Adam, he's down in the pit lane. You saw that. I was standing right across from the pit boxes when they left. The two was a nose ahead, and we went over this in the driver's meeting. The car blending has a responsibility to pull into the car in the fast lane. They must go behind unless they are fully ahead of the car. They were not fully ahead. The 99 needs to give the position back. Okay. Thank you, Shit. I wouldn't work in race control for all the money in the world. Saw a picture that was tweeted, I hope you saw it earlier this week from uh, at IMSA, if you're not following, you should be, of uh, the array of screens that they are watching all at the same time. Extraordinary amount of information that's being processed there. And not, 
more information, not necessarily making things easier either. They've got to sift through that very quickly and make decisions. And they do that very well indeed in this championship. Two hours and 12 minutes to go. And we're still waiting really to see some quote unquote proper racing. Mazda number 55 of Jonathan Bomarito has been off the track. He's got a very dusty front end on that car. I was going to say he has a dusty nose, but of course it's not his nose that's dusty, it's the prototype. How does your, my Mazda's got no nose, how does it smell? That's uh, the old joke, isn't it? Uh, still got the safety car lights on, the very attractive metallic blue Lexus rumbles into the final corner. Well, prototype class split has happened. But Earl, yeah, it's only the prototypes that class split, isn't it? So Earl Bamba is still going to be mired in the GTD field, I believe. The GTs are mingled. But in fairness, the top five are together. It's Chevy, Chevy, BMW, BMW, Ford. And who stopped at the side of the track? That's the 54 car. That's John Bennett, who has stopped trying to get into the pit lane. And now, is he waiting for the... No, he's not waiting for it to go green to drive in. Has the pit lane been closed? Has he stalled it? Or has the car just expired? No, he's got it fired up again. Now, the co no, and it's stopped again. This is the orange, white, and black car. Uh, Shea Adam is down in the pit lane. Shea, I, I, what I, the only thing I can guess is they're waiting for the time for for uh, for yeah, John to got, have done the time. He's got one second to go. Now, well, now he can, can go, go into the pit lane, I reckon. Collins up on the wall, so they are definitely going to do their pit stop, and now the board drops down, and the 54 does nose onto the pit lane, so that would have been very, very smart are, tactics are the pits with open? Jeff Brown. Yes. The pits haven't closed again. No, the pits are open for everybody this time by. Right, okay. So what... The <laughs> right, okay. I see what they've done there. Um sure that race control will be overly happy now what i will say is that car did not stop on the racetrack per se he was in the pit lane entry lane and he pulled over and it will be colin brown getting in Shea adam new set of continentals presumably nope Colin oh. is going out on warm tires and okay. they just put a little bit of fuel in. They're waiting on the driver change to be completed. The door is still up. Colin uh, getting help from the driver aid to get all the belts done. They've got the luxury of time. Safety car still is not yet in sight and the green light is on at the pit exit. Does he get there in time? Easily. Okay, so he'll be able to cycle back round. Yeah. He he'll won't get the pass by, of course. Correct. He'll be he'll be in the bit, you know, he'll be half a lap down probably by the time we go back to green. In fact, we're going back to green now, so yeah. if Colin hustles around, he's going to have super warm tyres and come up on the back of the GTD field, probably as they're coming past us, if not before. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I feel like we've been here before. Third, third time lucky. Third time is a charm, apparently. Two hours and eight and a half minutes to go. The green flag is in the air. And it's Dan Cameron who leads them away this time, getting up towards 150 miles an hour as he goes through the start-finish area. And the prototypes have played canny again, that's all right. It was further back down the field last time that the problems started. The two Corvettes are all right, and already Felipe Nazar side by side with the 85, the bright yellow of Robert Alain, and Nazar goes through. So Nazar goes through and takes that position, and that's a new 10th place. And Remember that, that car dropped back, they came into a closed pit. They won't be penalised for that, I don't believe, Jeremy, because they didn't touch the car. They effectively self-penalised by going to the back of the line. Yeah, I think probably right there. But uh, that, of course, is the championship leader. They've, uh, Eric Cohen's already clambered out of that car without even doing a racing lap, which would probably be frustrating for him. Uh, but uh, good news for the team, certainly, and he's now in, in pretty good shape. Colin Brown has just gone through start-finish in the 54. Colin has been sparkling. There has been a balance of performance change on the Global P2 cars, the first one enacted by any racing series anywhere in the world. 10 kilos more, three litres of fuel fewer for all of them. Uh, five and 66 reviewed on the start, no action. Well, yeah, that's reasonable because um, Joao Barbosa was tipped sideways 
for the 66 to hit him. Um, so that's not the issue. that's not what needed looking at. What needed looking at, and that might just be a difference in the numbers on the screen. It, it was the 99 into the five that was the catalyst to all of that. The restart, the first restart reviewed, no action. Thanks to race control for letting us know those. So Colin Brown making up time with a clear track ahead of him. Hasn't actually caught the back of the field quite as quickly as I thought he might. But we are racing. Hurrah! Live from trackside, IMSA Radio and TV. Jeremy Shaw and John Hindorf with Shea Adam as our Continental Tire pit lane reporter. Coming up after the race, don't forget our Michelin Porsche race tech. We can have a lot to talk about here. Uh, your hashtag is Michelin PRT to at IMSA Radio and you can get in touch with us all the way through the race, the remaining two hours and six minutes of this race. Right. Shall we get into a bit of racing Please. here? Uh, battle for second position in GT Le Mans sees the number three Chevy Corvette of Jan Magnussen who is leading the championship along with his teammate Antonio Garcia. Under a bit of pressure here from, I was going to say, a resurgent BMW team, but they're finding their feet with the new BMW M8 in its first year of competition. It's the white number 25 in third place and the black number 24 in fourth. Alexander Sims and Jesse Kron, respectively, behind the wheels of those Bavarian GT cars. Front-engined V8 twin turbo for the BMWs against the normally aspirated front engine V8 for the moment at least of the Corvette ahead. C8R likely to be twin turbo V8 when that comes along next year. New uh, fastest lap on that last lap, by the way, by Colin Brown uh, in last place. Clear Look at track. me face. Look at me face. Is there any surprise yeah, in no, that? Exactly right. No, and, and particularly because the the, rate, the the guys out front, they want to make sure they don't burn off their tyres too quickly. So they'll be running a relatively conservative pace, although it's certainly good enough for the two accurates to edge away a little bit from Jordan Taylor in this first couple Mick. of laps. But uh, Colin Brown at the back of the, at the back of the field, where he's just going to go. Uh, as fast as he possibly can to try and get caught up. So things settling down. And here comes Earl Bamba fighting his way through GT Daytona. He's got up to the leader now, who is Madison Snow. Patrick Long didn't give him too much strife, being another Porsche driver. And Madison Snow shouldn't be fighting that 912 with the feisty Kiwi behind the wheel. Fourth in the championship. Uh, at the moment, check that, uh, fifth in the championship at the moment, but only a point away from fourth held at the moment by the number four Corvette of Tom Milner, Milner and Oli Gavin. Oli leading the race at the moment. The pass is made, Earl Bamba is through, and now sets off trying to catch up the best, the back of his own class, which at the moment is led by the bright yellow number four of Oli Gavin, which goes past our spot on the track under the walkover bridge towards turn five commits to the apex and gets on the accelerator as quickly as possible under the road bridge and now the turn six possibly the trickiest corner here it doesn't look that hard but you've got to nail the turn in perfectly if you're a moment too late you get into the grey and understeer off if you're a moment too early you exit the corner too early and understeer off Oli Gavin charging down the hill now, has already got the corkscrew behind him, heading into turn 10. Bit of camber on that right-hander, using all the kerb and laying Michelin rubber down on it, the red and white kerbs already marking up because of the abuse that they've had throughout the weekend. Right over the kerb and onto the green coloured paint on driver's right as he heads across the start-finish line to complete another lap in the lead at GTLM. The V8 Corvette motor singing happily ahead of the mm. lanky Englishman's feet. Excuse me, John, side by side there into turn five with the number 31 car trying to squeeze around the outside of car number 22, Pipo Durrani having none of that. Interestingly, of course, Pipo Durrani will be driving with Felipe Nasser next season. That was announced earlier this weekend. Four Portuguese speaking drivers for the Action Express pair of cars in 2019. Eric Curran staying with the team, but deciding to reduce his commitment of racing to the longer races. 
or being decided to uh, reduce his commitment to yep. the races. Been with that organisation for a very, very long time. Dane Cameron and Elio Castro Neves just squeaking away from Jordan Taylor, the two yes. accurates, about a couple or three seconds ahead. Uh, let's slip down to the pit lane for a, an update from Shea Adam, our Continental Tire pit lane reporter. Delighted to say that Joao Barbosa, who was turned around in that first run to green, is with Shea now. I'm happy that I can talk to you, Joao, because that was a very scary accident. You are okay, first and foremost. Yeah, it uh, was a very unfortunate accident. Um, you know, I, I thought we all, all the field would start to go, and then they check up a little bit. And now I, I had to check up not to hit the car in front, and I just got drilled in the back and spun around, and then uh, all the GT cars were going. It was uh, a pretty intense moment for a while. I was trying to see who's going to avoid me, and then I just got hit big time uh, by a GT car. You know? Unfortunately, I run the GT car and uh, we run our race as well. It's, um, you know, it's really unfortunately. We're really looking forward for the the race. The, the Mustang sampling guy like was running really good. Uh, we had, a, I think we're gonna have a really good race pace, but unfortunately, it's really, really early finish for us. We didn't even cross the start finish line, and then it's uh, obviously not very good for the championship so that's a big blow for for the, the championship i'm really sorry for the whole team that uh, we have to go through this but it's racing sometimes it happens but it's tough i'm just glad you're okay and good luck at petite yeah thank you i'm okay and i can't wait to go to petite yeah. joao barbosa uh, on that continental tie update and not good news for another cadillac as the third place car of jordan taylor is without engine power started to stutter going past us between four and five and it's going to be another full course yellow it is a full course yellow and all of the gt le mans cars getting just before <laughs> the full course yellow is called see that's they must have somebody listening to us Shea adam can call the stops corvette racing we know listen to us both corvettes are in the pit lane the three and the four came in in the order four and three their pit boxes are inverted because of the championship standings brilliant pit stop by the number three crew they are nearly done changing the tires the fuel prop has come out the four car is cleared to leave but can't leave because it's seen the rest of the way so the three the championship leader gets out ahead of the four then it is the 67 and then the 25 bmw so ford back up to third on the pit stops the 912 stayed out the porsche stayed out because they did their pit stop yeah. in the last caution yeah and the 24 bmw as well so they will be leading the class. The safety car is scrambled from the end of the pit lane, and we see the Lexus once again with Jordan Taylor having ground to a halt before he got to the corkscrew. And from listening to the onboard, I'm told by a sound team that it sounded as though he lost gear. So he's coming through turn four. He was already going slowly on the run into turn four, and he crawled past us. I may have just lost all drive there. But uh, that is not something that he could get it back from there. He's done well to get it halfway up the hill, to be honest, and it's going to need a tow to get it out. It will flat tow. It doesn't need a, a flatbed, a rollback, to get it away. Now, have they hooked him up? Yes, they have. This is on the rear hull straight heading up to the corkscrew. And the hard-working track services team already out there for the recovery a chance was the engine note is down just a little to say thank you to all of our volunteers on the track here whether you hold a flag or drive a safety truck or help in any way whatsoever great that you're giving up your free time so that we can enjoy our sport and it's particularly appetite that here because the circuit is run by a group of volunteers called scramp if you don't know what that's all about, then please go and look them up. And if you're around this area and you want to give back to motorsport, then you could do a lot worse than look them up and find out how you can help. It's an amazing community asset. Mazda, uh, uh, WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca, Mazda Raceway as it was down through the years has contributed a large amount of money to the public coffers. And it's been embraced by the local community. Now, extraordinarily, the 10 car seems to be running again. 
Uh, That's Lee really unfortunate because that team came in here super strong this weekend. Yeah, look great. Uh, it's been uh, oh, it's going straight, uh, straight behind, behind the straight back to the gone paddock. straight into the back way in the paddock. So. Uh, that's why it may not even have been running that car, just rolling it down the hill, but certainly is in the back of the paddock now. Let's see if it can drive under its own 5.5 Cadillac power. Yes, it has got a bit of fire in its belly now, but it's going to lose the lap that it was on. It's lost a lap already, and now it's, yeah, it's in the paddock itself, and there's clearly something wrong. It was throwing yeah. out some vapour from the back when it started to climb the hill, and that's dead stick as yeah. it pulls up in the back of the paddock. I think so, John, and that's the second and fourth place cars in the championship having disastrous beginnings to this race here this afternoon. So massive champ championship implications. Carol Brink tweeting to us from trackside here at IMSA Radio that the 10 car was already smoking two laps before that car ground to a halt. So we'll get the prototypes back to the front of the field. The pits will not open, so the GT Le Mans cars who got in did steal a march, but now the two Corvettes, the remaining Ford and the 25 BMW, the remaining Ford being the 67 of Richard Westbrook, soft foot uh, Westbrook, as he is known around these parts, because he can eke out a gallon of fuel like few others. Remember the victory here, was that last year? 2016 that was, thank Two you, year. That was their first victory with the Ford GT. But they have now got 11 GT Daytona cars between themselves and Jesse Kron, who stayed out in the 24 BMW, and Earl Bamba, who had made his pit stop a little bit earlier in the 9-1-2 at the end of the uh, previous yellow flag period. So an hour and 55 minutes to go. Amazingly, the top four have yet to stop. The two Acuras and the two Mazdas, Japanese what? manufacturers, they've stayed out there from the start. Dan Cameron, Enlo Castro Nevis, Jonathan Bomarito and Ollie Jarvis, they're just going with the flow at the moment and taking the track position. Yeah. Uh, what was interesting before this latest caution period, we only had, what, half a dozen laps uh, of green, but the, the Acuras at the front were able to run a nice, consistent pace. Number 10 car, yeah, that was dropping back, but dropping back more significantly was from them was the rest of the field led by the two Mazdas. I mean, they were losing quite a bit of ground they were losing better part of a second a second a lap to the uh, to the the well now two then three leaders uh, including number 10 car which of course is now out of the race and into the paddock bit of uh, news that uh, picked up just before the start of the race i think we're going to go back to green now I'll, I'll tell you about this it's uh, significant for the teams uh, rather than for spectators in the run into the 2019 season uh, and thanks to the brilliant Mr Baker from Michelin for letting me know that earlier on. Uh, we're back to green. An hour and 54 minutes to go and again. And, oh, I was about to say an exemplary start from the prototypes and as the words were coming out of my mouth, the 22 of Pipo Durrani gets on the kerb at the Andretti hairpin, the first one, and unsettled the car. Don't think there was contact well, there. He was trying to, go, trying to go down the inside. It'll be the right front of the car that's got damage, and it looks OK to me. He was trying to go up the inside of Misha Goikberg. Well, the number 31 car was very adjacent there as well, wasn't it? Philippe ah, Nasser. Oh, was it Nasser in the red and white car? Uh, he was trying to squeeze down no, the it was inside. The 99. Yeah, it was the 99 okay. and got spun, and... There was a little gap on the inside. Kudos to everybody who followed through all the GT cars who didn't hit him. But they're getting used to that by now, having cars in the middle of the track. It starts and restarts. Uh, no full course yellow required. Dealt with with local yellows. And here's a pass for position. Corvette on BMW coming to the top of the hill with the 22 of Pete Motorani trying to fight his way back through. All kinds of battle going on here. In fact, it wasn't the BMW, it was the 33 of Ben Keating. Another white car, Ford down the inside, the 67, the remaining Ford down the inside of the 15, David Enemeyer, Hansen, Lexus, as the GT Daytona cars are pushing through the GTD field, or the GT Le Mans cars rather, pushing through the GTD field, and people Durrani, Quick out of the corners, but those 
GT Le Mans cars are pretty quick in a straight line. Shea Adam has some takers from the GT Daytona field, Shea. Minimum time has been met, so for the number 51 Spirit of Race Ferrari. Sorry, Shea, off. It's the remaining four, the 67, right where people Durrani was now. Was that a little ushering off for Richard Westbrook? He's managed to get through the gravel at turn four. He rejoins right in front of us and gets going again. Wow, that's... Yeah, this is no, people getting frustrated by well, being out of he, position. And Durrani's carving his way through, but he's got to give respect to the cars around him. I'm not sure what happened down there, because I think the 67 car was working his way through the GTD leaders As well, there. Yes. And there's been a big shuffle around in GTD. The order was 48, 86 and 58, but the 58 car now, Patrick Long, I think, is leading in GT Daytona. Let's see them as they come past us in a moment or two whilst I wait to see them go by. Shea Adam can update us on the pit stops with our Continental Tire pit lane report. Okay, Magnusaudi has Andy Lally. 73 Park Place Porsche has Jörg Bergmeister, so watch out, Mr. Magnuson. And the 51 Spirit of Race Ferrari that was quickest in morning warm-up now has Oz Negri. All cars took fuel and tires. And Jeremy Shaw was spot on because there was a big green number two illuminated on the side of the formal, formerly leading GT Daytona Lamborghini, so Madison Snow down into second, and it is Pat Long that leads on his home ground. Meantime, the 25 BMW goes past its GT Daytona counterpart at the exit of turn number two. And the 67 Ford, it's not a good day for Ford, is it? As they were going through traffic, he went down the inside of the... Ferrari number 64, there was wheels banging with the number four Corvette on the exit of the corner. Oli Gavin won't be happy with that. Oh, wait a minute, what happened And then the 67, actually the 67 went off at turn two. I think he might have broken a I steering arm when he yes. hit the, the Fords side by side. As he's going into turn three, he just understeered off. Yeah. I thought it was further round at four because I saw him rejoin. And in fact, he's in the pit lane with Shea Adam. He's pulled into a, his pit box and they're immediately going to work on the right front of the car. It is a right front steering arm. They're going to try and fix it out here because this car very much in the championship. And Shea Adam hustling down there. So that was side to side contact with Oli Gavin on the exit of turn two. And he understeered off at turn three because he simply couldn't turn. Richard Westbrook has done well, Jeremy, to get that car back and lose such little time. I think it's going to have to go behind the wall, though. They may have done more damage. That's both of the Fords, second and third in the championship, out of the race so far. Extraordinary yep. stuff. Uh, and Ford had a good opportunity here to tie up the, the GTLM Manufacturers Championship. They came in with a 12-point advantage over Chevrolet, but uh, they are almost certainly going to finish last in the class here, so potentially uh, could lose as many as at seven points here. They could lose more than half of their lead going into the finale at Road Atlanta. Oh, my goodness, goodness me. Goodness gracious, this is There's bizarre. frustration down at Chip Ganassi, one of the mechanics trying to kick the wheels straight. Um, I'm not sure what they think they can do there. Uh, at the moment, they'll get points with that car for being... Uh, sixth in class, won't they? And they're not going to get any better than that with the 66 car missing a right front corner. That isn't going to come back and do any laps. And the number 911 Porsche is behind the wall with Nick Tandy. Nick Tandy took it there, and we haven't heard whether that car will come back. They're actually, they've taken the right front wheel off to so that they can push the car back down the pit lane and the bottom of the car is scraping along the ground as they push it backwards towards the cut-off into the back of the pit. So they are going to try and get that car out just in case anybody else has any mechanical problems and they can net more than six, sixth position in the championship points for that car. Sixth and eighth as far as the drivers' championship, but of course... Uh, they will get, well, they'll get third place points, won't they? Because there's only two manufacturers ahead of them. No, check that, there's three. They'll get fourth place points for manufacturers, Jeremy. So they won't lose quite as much of their lead there. Oh, my goodness. Meantime, yeah, really at the front of the field, ridiculous. Dan Cameron, Elio Castro Neves, and Castro Neves being closed in on now by the first of the 
Mazdas, the number 55, Jonathan Bomarito, who's pulling Ollie Jarvis along with him. Whilst Dan Cameron starts to move away behind them, a 31 of Philippe Nazik goes round Misha Goikberg, round the outside of the exit of the Andretti hairpin. And I would say that Goikberg is struggling on tyres. Yeah. He's not stopped, remember, that car. A lot of these guys are struggling for tyres. Now, what was interesting Excuse to me, me he there... Has stopped, but he's still those, struggling for grip. Those first three or four laps, uh, Dane Cameron and the leader race was being very, very cautious. He didn't want to push too hard. Now, on that last lap, he pulled away from Castroneves at a pretty prodigious rate. Jonathan Bomarito is staying right with Castroneves, as is the second of the Mazdas with Oliver Jarvis aboard. Significant change in GT Daytona, Jeremy, that I've just noticed because Catherine Legg has gone past Madison Snow, fabulous passing, goes through into second place, and Madison Snow is losing pace at the moment. Mm. He's about to be passed by Kyle Marcelli in the Lexus, and I didn't think I'd be seeing that today. The Lexus has been extremely limited by rear tyre grip, and this is not a good circuit for them, and now he's right up Marcelli in the chrome blue Lexus here from 3GT, right up with Madison Snow, and right in there as well is Bill Oberlin as they go three wide for a moment into turn five. Bill Oberlin, the liquid molly, turn a BMW. That was the damaged car. Oh, and Madison Snow defending rather too robustly there, and may have got a little love tap for his troubles. Yes, did because a little something, a grill, has fallen off the BMW where there was just the barest of rubs coming out of turn six and heading up the hill. It's all getting a bit fractious here, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, so we talked about patience being a bit of a key here. There's not much to be patient so, no. shown so far, just a lot of aggression. And you've got to be really careful if you're going to be that aggressive. And into the pit lane, Pat Long from the lead of GTD. Sheer Adam. He will be getting out, and Christina Nielsen installed behind the wheel of the Porsche. She won here one year ago, but that was behind the wheel of a Ferrari. So she's looking to win two consecutive years in two different manufacturers. An hour and 45 minutes to go, which means Christina will drive for 45, and then Patrick will get in for the last hour. They are putting new Continental tires onto that number 58 Wright Motorsports Porsche, and every drop of fuel that they can possibly squeeze He's in as the mechanic is leaning on the nose. The fuel nozzle is still attached. Driver's side door is closed. Fuel nozzle comes out. And no, the driver door is still open. Now they close the net. Now they close the door. Christina fires the flat six into life. A nice, beautiful slide. And she is leaving back the to, pits. Back to the action on the track. Thank you, Shea. And Talk. Madison Snow's He's got really a problem. Struggling. He's really struggling for rear grip on the Lamborghini. He's been passed by Bill Oberlin. And he's about to be passed by the number 33 of Ben Keating. They've got to get that car in now because they are just dripping away at positions and time on the track. Poor Madison struggling as the leader comes through. Dan Cameron goes by easily in the Acura, but that's not the issue. The issue is that three competitors have gone through, including Catherine Legg, who now leads, was pole position, remember, dropped down to fourth in the original melee, and Catherine Legg in the Acura number 86 from MSR back to the top spot and leading now by five and a half seconds mm. from the Lexus of Kyle Marcelli. Can't believe that Lexus is doing so well. Marcelli has not stopped. Catherine Legg has not stopped. Madison Snow has not stopped and is struggling. Bill Oberlin, Cooper McNeil, David Enemeyer Hansen. McNeil's in the pits. The Ferrari came into the pits last time around, but I think that Madison Snow stayed out here. Madison stayed out, but the Ferrari is in. Cooper McNeil's driving time is done, and Gunnar Jeanette taking over. They are doing four new Continentals and fuel for the Ferrari. John, I just noticed the last time when they came through, one of the Mazdas has severe damage to the left front. I couldn't see which one it was, but there is a gaping hole in the left front of one of the Mazdas. Pit stop almost done for the 63 Ferrari. They're just waiting on fuel. Driver change went perfectly, and Gunnar Jeanette is released onto the wild of Laguna Seca. Well, Jonathan Bomarito's up in the second position now splitting the two Acuras let's see whether it was the 55 or the 77 that uh, has got that damage at the front of the car here's your Cadillac in race update with an hour and 43 minutes to go Dan Cameron leads by three seconds the six at team Acura Penske prototype leading from the 55 Mazda Team Yost. There's two of the biggest names in endurance racing, duking it out at the front of the field. A second further back is the second of the Acuras under the auspices of 
Elio Castro Nevis, then Ollie Jarvis in the number 77. So 6.55, 7.77. And then another two seconds further back, the first of the P2 cars is Sebastian Saavedra for the uh, red and yellow number 52. I'm told by Sheer Adam, it is the 77 of Oli Jarvis that has the damage. The GT Le Mans uh, standings are as follows. 24 BMW, Jesse Krohn by a second and a half. Then Jan Magnussen, then eight seconds further back down. Sorry, then Earl Bamba, the 912. Then eight seconds further back, the first of the Corvettes. They have had a pit stop more recently. And quickly at the top of the GTDs, Catherine Legg leads from Kyle Marcelli by seven seconds. Bill Oberlin in the number 96 BMW is third as Madison Snow, the championship leading Lamborghini is in the pit lane, Sheer Adam. And he will stay here because Brian Sellers will take back out the number 48 Lamborghini of Paul Miller Racing fuel and tires. Beautifully executed stop by Paul Miller's boys and girls over the wall. The 64 Ferrari was also in. They also did fuel tires and Townsend Bell now drives. And to end up this Cadillac in-race update, bad news for one of the Cadillacs, an official retirement. We knew this one was coming. The Joao Barbosa number five Mustang sampling car now has been listed as official retirement. Acura Mazda, Acura Mazda at the front of the field. An hour and 41 minutes to go. That's your Cadillac in-race update. Cadillac, real races, never take a day off. Just after three o'clock in the afternoon and... We haven't had much green flag racing, but my goodness, we've had plenty of action and excitement and not a little controversy. You may want to put your two cents worth in at the end of this race. Remember, the chequered flag is the end of the race, but only the start of the conversation. As on IMSA Radio RS2, part of the Radio Show Limited network of channels, we'll head after our post-race interviews to post-race tech. That's where we hand the airwaves over to you, the original listener-inspired piece of programming. Get your tweets in now. Use the hashtag MichelinPRT. You control the editorial in that part of the show. Hashtag MichelinPRT to at IMSA Radio. Jonathan Bomarito, I'm not sure how he can see out of the front of that Mazda. Somebody's been spraying an awful lot of fluid on both sides of the windscreen. He'll have to use one of the tear-offs when he comes in next time around. He doesn't want to wipe that screen because that will go completely opaque if he does that. Uh, extraordinary that he can see anything through there. So take a breath. It's been action all the way from, well, in fact, before the start and the green flag. It was just being thrown when that incident that Misha Goikberg kicked off started off the uh, incidents today. Welcome to our IMSA broadcast, IMSA broadcast booth to the new general manager of WeatherTech Raceway, Laguna Seca, Tim McGrain. Tim, thanks for, for joining us. And uh, I don't know if this is your first experience of uh, the WeatherTech Championship, but my goodness, we've had plenty of excitement already. It, it was an, an exciting start, yeah. <laughs> um, th this is, in, in my capacity, this is my, my first uh, IMSA WeatherTech Championship. Um, I've been to a number of them before from the other side of the fence. So. Your background uh, is in classic and vintage cars, and of course, you've just come off uh, one of the, the biggest events in classic circles in, in the world with Classic Car Week here at WeatherTech Race with Laguna Sega, and I hear it was a roaring, ex uh, roaring success. It was. That particular weekend, obviously, uh, our event, the Rolex Monterey Motorsports Reunion, is part of a number of events uh, that happened here on the Monterey Peninsula in August. Um, you know, the other major legacy event being the, the Pebble Beach Concours. Um, you know, the, these two events um, sort of started it. You know, we started in 1957 and, and they started in 1950. Um, so, so just it, it's a, a fabulous history behind the historics. Yeah, yes. it's, a, it's a fabulous weekend. Um, all things classic cars. Uh, a lot of the uh, luxury car manufacturers have a big presence. So, you know, looking at the cars you see here, you know, you saw a lot of them around, you know, uh, uh, Ferrari, uh, NSX, you know, or Porsche, or, or have a presence. So, uh, and, and important actually that we're talking about that, and even looking to next year already, because in the 50th anniversary of IMSA, IMSA is the the featured mark at that event next year. That's that, quite that, a big that thing. That is correct. E each year, this particular event, we have a featured mark, and next year, 
um, you know, the tribute will be to 50 years of IMSA, which is going to be, um, you know, wonderful. You know, IMSA first came here in 1974. We've had some, you know, a wonderful legacy with the series, some exciting racing and some great cars have been on this track and it's going to be good to see them back. Uh, and if you're here at the track, by the way, I'll further afield the IMSA 50th anniversary book. And when they're gone, they're gone. They're only printing one. You can get them at various places around the paddock here at the uh, souvenir areas. Uh, a great coffee table souvenir of 50 glorious years. Uh, Tim, the changes that we've all had to get used to is remembering to say WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca uh, this weekend. I've slipped up a couple of times. I've put the ten dollars in the jar. I have to say I'm your sure predecessor. For my drink. Yeah, well, yes. I have to say your predecessor, Jill Campbell, hammered your previous partner into me over the last 18 years so that I wouldn't dare uh, get it wrong. T talk about this new partnership and uh, and how that takes uh, the WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca forward because it's been a, a bit of a fraught time. For, for the raceway, but now seems a lot more settled, thank goodness. It, it is, you know, we uh, a few years back, you know, there was some challenging times that the track went through. Um, you know, we are now completely owned by the Monterey County, you know, which presents some exciting opportunities. The county are, are very much behind this facility. We got so does Scramp still have a, a, a role here? Scramp does, you know, Scramp is the, the management organization. So the county contracts with Scramp to, you know, manage the race facility. Um, but it is all county owned, county supported. Um, you know, all the money that the track raises and some gets invested back in by the county. Um, we've done a lot of improvements up to now. A lot of them are being below the surface so they haven't been seen, um, but a lot more to come in you know, exciting times ahead of us. Uh, I noticed as well, uh, another uh, part of the changeover from your previous sponsors, Mazda, who have been a great partner for you down the, the last uh, almost two decades. Um, I saw a Lexus on the way in, and we've seen the, the Lexus safety cars as well. That's a, that's a nice partnership to have as well. It, how's, it, how's that working? It, it is. You know, in addition to WeatherTech, you know, Lexus came on board as our official luxury partner. Um, so we're very excited about that. You know, both great partners, both very engaged in, in you know, all the motor racing that we have here. And in a couple of weeks' time, I'll be back here for my first go at Ren Sport. Now, that's all things Porsche, and that's another huge event. It is that quite possibly, you know, will be one of our biggest, if not biggest event. Uh, four days, as you say, of, of all things Porsche. Um, a wonderful event. If you haven't been here uh, before, um, you know, it, it is the, the atmosphere around the event is pretty tremendous. And, and Porsche as a partner bring out, you know, their legacy cars and their legacy drivers. I'm really looking forward to that, I have to say, Tim. And before we let you go, uh, talk about next year again, because great news for motorsport fans around this area because uh, we've got the Indy cars coming back here, and, and that's got a lot of hearts beating quicker. It, it has, and, and first of all, that would not have happened if it had not been the support of Monterey County. So, um, you know, Indy cars are coming back, first time in 14 years that they've been here. Jeremy's very excited by that. Yeah. It's, um, so we have, you know, the IMSA weekend and the Indy weekend back to back. We're going to create this, you know, Monterey Speed Week. Um, you know, 10 days of, of all things great motor racing at, at what we think is America's most exciting racetrack since 1957. Uh, and long may that continue. Tim, thanks for taking time out of uh, your very busy schedule to come and talk to us here on IMSA Radio and IMSA TV. Let's head down for a Continental Tire pit lane update. Shea Adam has got some cars from the front of the field. We've got the 55 Mazda in. They have done fuel and tires and Harry Tinknell installed into that car. And the 31 Whelan Engineering Cadillac is in. Philippe Nasser staying in that car. A wheel nut just rolling off the right rear, but the mechanic not losing his cool grabs one off his belt and supplements it. And we should be seeing the 77 in here shortly as well. It will be a driver change. I believe that is Tristan Nunez up on the wall for them. Huge news for the championship. John De Geese from Sportscar 365. Fastest finger first there, John. As coming from IMSA, the number five, the Mustang sampling Cadillac will not score any championship points. It didn't take the green flag. It didn't cross the start line. And that has huge championship implications. Albuquerque was second and now we'll drop down already. Whatever happens now, I think that will put uh, Colin Brown and John Brennan into, into second position in the championship, at least second position in the championship. Now, the 66 car, I think, just got across the line and down towards the first corner, so they may escape that same fate. We'll have to get the clearance from that, thanks to uh, John De Geese. 
uh, on Twitter for that, at IMSA Radio, please, if you want to get in touch with us. So at the front of the field, Dan Cameron still leads, and it's Ennio Castro Neves, his teammate, but now, Jeremy, nine seconds the gap between first and second. And GT Le Mans, we've got a battle for the lead. It's BMW versus Porsche. Jesse Kron and Earl Bamba were the two that stayed out, and they've got about eight and a half seconds on the first of the cars that came in under, uh, so just before the last caution, didn't they? They timed it perfectly, and it is championship leading number three Chevy Corvette of Jan Magnussen, who leads the charge ahead of his teammate. This is hotting up again. Yeah, it is. Now things are getting interesting, aren't they? Certainly, and uh, Dane Cameron just did a masterful job of looking after his tyres at the beginning of this stint when we went back to green on that 23, and he's just leaving Elio Castroneves as far behind in our eight. As you say, almost nine seconds between those two. Uh, Oliver Jarvis is hanging with Elio Castanovas, but he can't find a way past. It was interesting to me, though, number 55 car made its pit stop uh, a lap or two ago. So now we we'll, we'll have to wait to see where he comes out in the traffic. But I think that could be a good move. Get fresh tyres on that car and, uh, and run as long as he can now. In GT Daytona, Catherine Legg, having taken the position on the track, now leads in the 86 Acura. She was on pole position, dropped out as far as fourth, as into the pit lane, the 77 of Ollie Jarvis. This is the Mazda with the damage to the left front. They're looking at it. Are they going to put a new front on that car? I'm not sure. They're still fueling it at the moment. And meantime, drama for someone in the pit lane. I thought... I thought uh, she said the 58 there, but that car's not in the pit That's lane. out on track, John, as it came down the front straight. I noticed Christina Nielsen's car has ah. the driver's side door popped open, and uh, Brian Sellers was about to overtake her. The 77 Mazda cannot get refired, and the crew members are pushing it. They can get to a certain point with trying to push it, and then they have to push it back, which now they are having to do. Oh, oh dear me. They've had no luck but bad luck, have they? Sorry, Chair, when you said the 58 had a problem with the driver's door, I immediately thought that they were in the pit lane. Didn't expect them to be uh, on the pits, and I was very surprised by that. Me meantime, in the pit lane, Elio Castro Neves, and hang on a second, was that a Ford going past us there? This is the 67 going back out. They really never quit at Ford Chip Ganassi Racing. Both of the Lexuses have finally come into the pit lane. Driver change for both cars. The 14 Lexus has a load of damage to the right side of the car down on the bottom. They are doing a driver change here, and they are doing a driver change down for the number seven Penske. So that will be Ricky Taylor taking over for fresh Continental tires for him as the 77 stopped in the pit box just ahead of them. Uh, 14 Lexus gets going again. They've been doing really well on their stint. The number seven Lexus is now rolling, and the 15 Lexus gets some life in it too as Jack Hawksworth gets to take that car out on track. Okay. Surprised that the uh, 77 driver, Jonathan Bomberita, uh, excuse me, um, Ollie Jarvis could see anything with the way his, uh, his screen was dirty, but a quick tear off and all of a sudden, ah! Ah, that's what it looks like out uh, on the front. Yeah. Right, Jeremy. Well, the, the interesting thing here is the number seven car just uh, come to pit lane. We've got an hour and a half remaining, just less than. It can get to the end of the race now on one more pit stop. Yeah. Uh, number 55 and number 31, they came in, what, three laps ago. That's going to be a stretch to get to the end from there with just one more pit stop. Uh, I'm sure that's their strategy, though, as the number six, the race leader, is on pit lane. Can't really see the point in staying at him. He was turning laps in the 21s, so three seconds slower than he was be, ha, would be will be running on a fresh set of tyres. And uh, number 52 car is going to stay out and lead a lap, but uh, which is fine. But um, and they're going to be losing time to all those other cars that are out having made their pit stops now on fresh tyres. Shit, Adam was watching the Acura Team Penske number six, which is now down and away. Juan Montoya going out with four new Continental tires, so he'll be a happy boy. And the number 33, Ryland Mercedes is in. Ben Keating's driving time is up, and Jerome Blickmullen plugged back into that car. They are just waiting on fuel, as both of the Nismos have been in. So the number two came in. Scott Sharp did his service and got out. Ryan Dial now driving that car. And Pipo Durrani in the 22 just came in for fuel and tires. Phew, we. Oh, and off, going out. Can you believe it? The number six going out of the pit lane does the thing that everybody does on the video games you get to the end of the pit lane and you're going far too fast and then drives across the exit curb and I 
Was that Dean Cameron staying in that car? That's okay. Something got, something awry with the timing screen, which is still showing that in the pit lane. Ah, the timing screen's just frozen for a moment. So it's let's. One of those uh, days, isn't it? it is one of those days. Just a big understeery moment onto the. In fact, didn't come out of the pit lane exit as he was coming through. Uh, very lucky not actually to pick up anybody who was on the track. Decided to head for the track rather than back to the pit lane exit. I'm pretty certain that was Juan Montoya who was installed uh, in that car, on the number six car. Yeah, confirmed. So is he coming back into the pit lane? No, stays out, but has a bit of a battle on his hands now with Philippe Nazza, yeah. and he's wide again, coming out the final corner, and Nazza gets the drag. Cadillac on driver's left, accurate driver's right, goes through the kink and down towards the braking area. Montoya tries to go around the outside. He's still on relatively cold tyres. Don't want to be out there, one. It's very, very slippery. And he hasn't given that up at all easily. He'll be annoyed with himself for understeering off. Take a breath, one. Take Very a breath. Aggressive driving out there. I mean, uh, Felipe Nasa there. You know, he, he kind of he made sure there was no room for Montoya to stay on the outside line. And you, you can't afford. You, he's a championship leader. He's got uh, he's got a big a big advantage now over everybody else, well, except for Colin Brown, who's, who's only ten points behind coming into this weekend. He's just got to take it easy now and bring it home. If he can finish first or second or third. Fantastic. There's no point there in picking a fight, particularly with somebody like JPM. John Juan Pablo Montoya does not, uh, you know, he's about as, uh, uh, as aggressive as they get. So you've got to be careful. Here's Colin Brown now making his first his pit stop from second yeah. position. Shea Adam. First time all race, Colin Brown is getting new tires because when he took over from John Bennett, it was already used tires. They do a windshield tear off for Colin as well, give him a little bit of a drink spot replenishment. Tire change nearly complete, just waiting on the left rear, and the fuel's still going in on the Orica chassis. They have two liters less to worry about putting into this car this weekend. Slight advantage, although it should take about the same time. Now the fuel probe comes out and Colin Brown gets some heat through his Gontis and a nice puff of white smoke. Thank you, Sheik. Colonel Tab pit lane report. Right, with these pit stops going on, I'll hold off on our Cadillac in race update. We've got an hour and 25 minutes to go. And then Oh, 96 BMW going slowly, more drama. That was Bill Oberlin in that car, he was in second place in GTD, and he's going very slowly past us towards turn five. He's got, well, there's damage to the front of that car from where he was rubbing earlier on, as Sebastian Saavedra comes in out of the lead in the AFS Orica, and will take on a new set of Continental rubber. Looks like Sebastian was getting out of that car as well, I'll confirm that in a moment, Shea confirming that in my ear, thanks Shea. As meantime, out on the circuit in GT Le Mans, let's give you the GT Le Mans rundown as part of our Cadillac in-race update. 24, Jesse Cron still out there, but now being closed in on under a second to Earl Bamba in the 9-1-2. Then it's 7.1 seconds, it was over eight, Jan Magnussen reeling them in slowly, Oli Gavin another six seconds further back, and then Alexander Sims, is further back again by about another second and Oberlin's come to a halt on the uphill from turn six to turn seven and if you can't get that car going that's a slam dunk he's got damage to the front of the car and damage to the right rear that's a slam dunk full course yellow get in now if you can great, great get job. in now great Paul. job by JDC Miller Motorsports to bring both of their two cars onto the pit lane P Catherine Legg has stayed out and she hasn't had the pit stop yet, shit, Adam, who's made it in? Paul Miller Racing made it in from GTD. They were the only car that elected to come down the pit lane from that category so far. It's Brian Sellers getting a top off of fuel, no new tires. So now Catherine Lake makes the hard left turn onto the pit lane. She has done a fantastic job so far today. We'll be getting out of the car and handing over to Alvaro Parent, a very capable driver here at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. He knows how to get it done. And the car coming in as the pits are closed, the full course caution is out. 
and they just made that by the skin wow. of their teeth. Also well. coming in, the number 24 BMW, Jesse Crone jumping out of that car, and John Edwards, as well as one of the Corvettes. Which one is this as it rumbles past? It is the championship leader, the number three. Jan Magnussen should be handing over to Antonio Garcia, and no, he's driving straight through. I don't understand what's going on with the three Corvette. They didn't stop in their box. It Maybe they didn't too make late. it in. Yeah, I got think in so. too late. I, I, think you, I think you're right, uh, John, because I think I think the race officials there, they realize what was going on here. They don't want to they don't want to mess in the race. They're always going to try and uh, and give people an opportunity to come onto pit lane if, if they can before they throw the full course caution. Yeah, three entered a closed pit. Yeah. It's on the timing screen now. Uh, thanks to Al Kamel and our team for refreshing that for us as well. An hour and 22 minutes to go. We're on our fourth full course yellow. And guess who's leading? Uh, Harry Tinknell is leading the race, and the reason for that yeah, is he good. made that. He was the first to make that pit stop on lap 37. Uh, he was he was t but he, working their way through traffic. He had closed a gap of about four seconds to the number six car of Dane Cameron. He came in early. Uh, was able to get on fresh tyres, turn some much better laps than Dane Cameron, uh, and has, has leapfrogged ahead of everybody. Uh, the other car that came in that same lap was Felipe Nasser in car number 31. That's what I was talking about earlier on by trying to uh, make more equal stints here. I, I couldn't quite understand why the other cars were staying out so long, except for the fact they were trying to make sure that they could get to the end of the race on one more Correct. pit stop. With this full course caution, those cars that came in a little bit earlier than that should, I think, be good to go now uh, with, with just one more pit stop before the end of the race. It might be pretty tight for a couple of them, but they will certainly be saving fuel but the, the key thing is they have that track position and track position uh, today I think is going to be pretty important we've seen it's pretty difficult to make a pass you've got to be really really aggressive and as we've seen with people being aggressive it often ends in tears we've seen that with far too many cars here this afternoon let's uh, go back down to Shea Adam who's uh, been watching some extraordinary stuff in the pits and behind the wall today, Shay. Just want to give a shout out and a round of applause to the 67 crew. This is two weeks in a row where they have had troubles mechanical with their car and they have not given up and gotten the car back out on the racing circuit in quite a miraculous amount of time. So very impressive job from Ford Chip Ganassi Racing once again. Thank you, Shay. Very loud car going by there. So an hour and 20 minutes to go. Uh, let's run through a full Cadillac in race update. Let's start in GT Daytona, where Andy Lally is going to be leading. Uh, Alvaro Parent has been installed in the 86 Acura, which uh, came in the pits in the lead with Catherine Legg behind the wheel. Let's see where she comes out. Gunnar Jeanette is next on our timing screen in the 63 WeatherTech Ferrari. Then it's Christina Nielsen in the middle of her stint in the 58 eight right racing Porsche. Then York Bergmeister in the 73 Park Place Porsche. Uh, T-Bell, Townsend Bell in the 64 Ferrari is next up in sixth position. Then it's Dominic Bauman in the first of the Lexus. They were running very well earlier on. We've got the pass around going on at the moment. If you're here at the track watching and thinking, why are people going by uh, behind the safety car? Finishing up the top 10, Jerome Blinkham, uh, Dominic Bauman, as I said, in the 14 Lexus. Then the 33, the white and green, uh, Mercedes GT4 of uh, Jerome Blegemol and Jack Hawks within ninth in the 15. Uh, that's the red chrome Lexus and the top 10 made up by Oz Negri in the Tricalore coloured spirit of race Ferrari. That means our championship leaders are outside the top 10. But remember, Brian Sellers splashed fuel just before that full course yellow came out and he got in and out. So it'll be now interesting to see how far he can stretch that fuel towards the end of the race in an hour and 18 minutes time. GTLM 912 Porsche because of uh, the uh, fact that they stayed out or should I say they came in just before the uh, pits were closed last time around so Earl Bamba leads uh, for Porsche and the 912 from Ollie Gavin the pole sitter in second in the four Corvette Alexander Sims third for BMW, three different manufacturers in the top three, championship leader there in fourth position, the number three of uh, Jan Magnussen in the prototypes, Harry Tinknell in the Mazda as described by Jeremy Shaw ahead of the field in the 55 car, Philippe Nasser 
on the 31. Now, this is a championship leading car, which looked to have been out of contention earlier on. Now back in the second place. Uh, and that is huge implications for the championship. Juan Montoya, not having one of his best days coming out of the pit lane, needs to calm himself down a little bit. Could have said that for quite a few races for one uh, this season. The number six car is in third position. Easy for me to say from the comfort of the booth, of course. Uh, Ricky Taylor is next up in the team car in fourth position. That's the other accurate team Penske. That's your top four. And that is your Cadillac in-race update. Real races never take a day off. Jeremy Shaw. Yeah. Half past three in the <laughs> afternoon. Look, an hour and 18 minutes to go. <laughs> I've got no idea. I tell you what, you, you compose your thoughts into things no, that we can broadcast while Shea gives us a pit lane update because we've got GT Le Mans cars in. I got you, Jeremy. Don't worry. So we've got the 25 BMW coming in and doing a driver change and tire change. Alexander Sims getting out. Connor D. Felipe, hometown hero, getting in. John Edwards in the 24 came in for a splash of fuel only. The number 912 Porsche has done a full service for tires, fuel, and Lawrence Vantor behind the wheel. So Larry taking over for Bambi. The number four Corvette drops off the air jacks ahead of the number three as it leaves the pit box again before its sister car. But because the sister car is a little further up, it means that Tommy Miller is going to be following the three out of the pit lane once again. Then we find the 25 BMW and then the 912 Porsche, the last off the pit lane. First off was that 24 BMW who just splashed. Phew -y. Thank you, Shay. So, so we did see all the GTLM cars in, Shay, is that correct? Uh, all except for that 67 Ford, which is now all which circulating is, again. We, which is, yeah, which is main laps down, right. Thank right, you okay. very much. Super tubes. Thank you, Shay. Right, Jeremy, compose your thoughts. I mean, put this one into 500 words for a magazine. Uh, a magazine article. This is going to be a tough one, isn't it? Well, yes, been a bit, the, the early stage was a bit embarrassing, but now it's getting rather interesting. And uh, uh, we, we've given uh, Mazda Team US a bit of grief for, for their strategies uh, at, at times during the season. This, though, was definitely a masterstroke to bring that number 55 car in early, as did the number 31 team. They always get their strategies right uh, at uh, Action Express Racing in the wheel and engineering car. And they came in early and they've managed to jump beca because of that. they came into the pits effectively in in second and sixth positions after the round of pit stops so with everybody else staying out number 77 car unfortunately had a problem uh, the other guys just came in when they wanted to come in and as a result of that number 55 and number 31 have circulated to, uh, have uh, cycled through to the front of the field because they were able to turn some hot laps on uh, on new fresh continental tires where all the other guys were struggling on old continental tires so that was a master stroke by those two teams um uh, oh, uh, you, then the, the rest of the prototypes now are pretty much all are, are all on the lead lap. So we've got quite a quite a contest brewing. The number 77 car, having had that problem during its pit stop, unfortunately, even though it's a fast car, is I believe one lap down to the rest of the field. Stand by for GT Daytona pit stops as we head down for a Continental Tire pit lane update. And the surprise to me here is I heard Shea saying that the 48 Paul Miller racing car is coming in with tyres being ready for that. It looks like everyone except the 86 of Alvaro Parent, the Acura, will be coming in here. 86, both of the Lexuses, the 14 and the 15, they stayed out, and the 33 Mercedes. It was fuel only for Andy Lally and the number 44, fuel only for the 63 Scuderia, of course, Ferrari. They are the first two off of the pit lane, and then the 64 follows them out. They did fuel and tires for that Scuderia, of course, Ferrari, but of course, everyone being held at the pit exit, the red light still on. Then goes the 51 Ferrari, but he's beaten out by the 48, the Paul Miller racing car, with fresh rubber, and the 58 Porsche has come in. They did do their stops, fuel, tires, and they properly shut the door this time, so that's good. Uh, for the 73 Park Place Motorsport Porsche, they have sticker tires on Jörg Bergmeister's car as well as fuel. And uh, I think Gunnar Jeanette was the first car that got out of that uh, gaggle there. And came in in second, was first of the cars out, but Alvaro Perret will be the car that cycles round to the lead. I'll have to wait till they come past us to confirm that. And actually, by the time I looked out the window, they'd already gone. So let me work through that one. At IMSA Radio, use the hashtag Michelin PRT for post-race tech. I'm not sure there'll be much to talk about after this one. Hardly <laughs> any issues arising or points that you might want to make as we head into the final race of the IMSA Championship season in, uh, what, three weeks, four weeks' time. 
uh, we'll hand over the uh, editorial control of the airwaves of IMSA Radio to your good selves, our audience, after the chequered flag. We've done some post-race interviews. Then it's Michelin post-race tech uh, with you setting the agenda. Hashtag at Michelin PRT to at IMSA Radio for... Uh, the original audience participation show. We do get some great questions, though, so please keep them coming. I, I think we might be sitting here debating for quite a while after that. It's uh, one of my favourite things of the, the weekend. So, an hour and 12 minutes to go. A bit of clean-up on the circuit. One or two bits of debris has uh, been, have been cleared up. Let's head down to the pit lane we've got time before we go green because we're just starting another lap of full course yellow behind the Lexus safety car continental tire pit lane update with the GT Daytona championship leader coming in here this weekend from Paul Miller racing Lamborghini here's Madison Snow well Madison that must have been an exciting start from your point of view how was the entire stint though the starts were the best part that's when we can move up you know it's difficult to race with a little down on power everybody can drive around us on the straights a little frustrating to be out there doing that but you know we're back in it you know now with an hour and 10 minutes left to go it's something where maybe a yellow and you can run all the way to the end you know it can really uh change the strategy up here at the end of the race seemed like there was a lot of drop off on the tires toward the end of your stint was it hard to drive at that point yeah i definitely got pretty loose out there we think there was a lot of pickup on the track with all the yellows the incidences in the start it definitely uh, affects the tires negatively and for all cars, so it sucks. Uh, yeah, I mean, it made it difficult. Made it difficult out there. Well, hey, long way to go. Good luck. Thank you. Brian Sellers back in that car now, and with an hour and ten minutes to go, he's starting to get into the area where a GTD. What do we think, Jeremy? About an hour for a GTD? A little more? Yeah, a bit more than an hour. Yes might be a little bit of yellow flag and with a brand new set of continentals going on that Paul Miller car it won't be that far away from going to the end depending on how quickly we go back green and whether we get any more full course yellow and that car having dropped down the timing and scoring monitor of course but there was no real disadvantage to them coming back in again for the second time to give Brian a top up of fuel and those new continentals uh, just looking at the, uh, just uh, picking up what, what Madison Snow was saying there, uh, the Lamborghini certainly isn't the fastest car on a straight line in GT Daytona. Uh, uh, through the warm up this morning, the fastest car was the uh, number 73 Porsche, 134 uh, miles an hour. The Lamborghini's best was 132, so a couple of miles an hour. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the bigger pro the bigger problem there, uh, Madison, was the fact that your tires were burning off more quickly yes, than the other guys. That's, that's why the guys were flying past you on the straights because you couldn't, couldn't get, get around the, the corner. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go green. I'll address that again uh, in a few moments when, after the restart. Just under an hour and ten minutes to go. This from Turner Motorsport. The heavy hit from behind has damaged the transmission cooler. We are out. That's a wrap. Bad look for the 96 liquid Molly cars. We go back to green flag racing, and again at the front of the field, it's pretty good. Mazda leading the 31 in second place. That's the Cadillac, but right up the inside, here comes the number six of Juan Montoya. He's been very aggressive right from the moment he's got in the car. In fact, was too aggressive because he fell off going out of the pits. Brian Sellers trying to make up room here as he goes round the outside of the number 44 of Andy Lally and gets it done, and he's right on the tail of Gunnar Jeanette. That's a really, really impressive move by Brian Sellers in the championship leading number 48. He knows he's got an opportunity to make up some positions and immediately gets into attack mode. He's got Gunnar Jeanette ahead of him. And it's Jeanette, Sellers, or Lally, and then T-Bell all in a line. As they head up the hill, right in there as well, the 51 Tricolore coloured car. It's the Osnegri machine, Spirit of Race. That paint job has become one of my favourites. Now, down in the pit lane, it looks like we've uh, got the 67 Ford back through the pits again. Is that right, Shea? No, I think the 66 is coming out from behind no the dog. Way. The crew has just jumped to attention and put their helmets on, and it is not for the 67 box. Right, OK, well, trying to get a few extra laps in to get it past the 9-11 of Nick Tandy. 
Oli Gavin trying to fight his way through at the moment at the front of the field. Tinknell leads for Mazda ahead of the Corvette with Felipe Nasser by about a second and a half. And Shea Adam, can you confirm that 66 championship contending Ford is back in the fight? It lives. They are just securing the wheel nuts and then they're going to send Dirk Mueller out on the circuit. That's extraordinary. That car with a front wheel ripped off at the start some 51 laps ago. And the Chip Ganassi Ford GT team have got that car back. That's not the first time we've seen cars coming out in the GT Le Mans category to try and do enough laps to pull them up a position or two. The odd championship point. When, we're, when Jeremy and I are standing bleary-eyed at the end of 10 hours of Mutul Petit Le Mans in, what, three, four weeks' time, the odd championship point could be absolutely crucial. And there is the Ford. Rumbling past Sheer Adam. It's on the pit, it's uh, on the track. That's extraordinary work. So let's take a deep breath and try and work out what is going on in all of the classes with a variety of different strategies being played out here in GTD. Alvaro Parent in the Acura number 86 that he took over from Catherine Leg, the pole sitter. Car's been down as far as fourth, fifth position, now back in the lead from Dominic Bauman in the Lexus. Dominic doing a great job. Has he been in that car from the start? He certainly did start the car. He must have got out in the middle. Uh, it was Marcelli that started, was it? Okay, fine. Then it's Jerome Blakemolin for the 33 AMG team. Brian Sellers still behind Gunnar Jeanette. Sitting uh, back in the pack of GTT at the moment, the championship leader in that 48 Lamborghini. Uh, just go back to the, the tyre degradation here, yes. and, and Madison Snow Capone being passed on the straights there. Uh, yesterday, in the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge race, uh, uh, Trent Hinman was running very, very well in the Volt Racing Ford Mustang. His, his regular minimum speed through turn two, the Mario Andretti Airbin, was regularly about 60 miles an hour on, on good yep. tyres. The end of the race on used tyres and with the clag that gets built up on the racetrack, his minimum speed through there was 38 miles an hour. Wow. 20 miles an hour down, that was just down to the, the lack of grip. Uh, you think it was always embarrassing actually driving the car, but that's what these guys are, are struggling with today. They're just not getting the minimum speed through the corner that they used to, and therefore not carrying the speed on the straights. The problem for Madison was the guys around him had better tyres yeah. under their car at that stage in the race. And that was one of that was our first Porsche keep the race grip not grunt, don't be left tired out at the end of the race when you want to fight. GT Le Mans, Tonio Garcia now in the car that he's taken over from. Jan Magnussen has Tom Milner behind him now, who split the two Corvettes. So a Chevy Corvette from, uh, excuse me, Jonathan uh, Jonathan Edwards behind him. Uh, John Edwards in that car, who won this race a year ago. Then it's Tom Milner, so it's 3.24 and 4. Then Conor de Filippi, who's in great form at the moment in the 25 BMW, the black car. Then Lawrence Vanto, and they're all pretty much line astern as they work their way through traffic. Great battle going on in the midfield of the, the middle of the top 10, should I say, of GTD. Fifth position, Gunnar Jeanette has got Brian Sellers, the championship leader behind him. Then Andy Lally in the number 44 Audi. That's the dark grey car. Then Osnegri in the tricolour coloured Ferrari number 51. Then Townsend Bell in the more Ferrari red coloured Ferrari. Then behind then York Bergmeister in the dark grey Porsche, the 73 Park Place car, and then Christina Nielsen in the red, white and black car. They're all together, all light astern, all on the front straight right now, about yeah. to cross the start finish line. That's fifth down to 11th in GT Daytona. Yeah, brilliant battle going on there, certainly, isn't it? Absolutely tremendous stuff. Uh, the Corvette, meanwhile, just a number three car edging away just a little bit now from 24. Uh, BMW, which is holding off number four Corvette. I'm just watching the gap though at the very front of the field. Oh, like Harry Tinkner is flying. He's setting his best laps of the race. It's got gone purple in sector two. And one minute 17.2 last Jeremy, time around. Significant change there after being bottled up behind the WeatherTech Ferrari for a while. Looks like Brian Sellers thinks it's time to go. He had to go offline and he has to clean up his tyres as he goes into turn five and Lally 
follows him through. Maybe just a little mistake there by the 63 driver, Gunnar Jeanette, and Andy Lally defence going up to turn five, also trying to make a move in there as well. Townsend Bell trying to take advantage of the cars ahead of him, checking up, but the significance there is there is a new fifth position in GT Daytona heading into the corkscrew now, and that is Brian Sellers, our championship leader. He's grabbing some points back on the car that leads the race, second in the championship, and that's Alvaro Parent and Catherine Legg. And by the way, just in third position is the other car that's still in with the championship fight. That's the 33 car. Meanwhile, at the head of the field, Harry Tinknell, as Jeremy said, going quicker and quicker. The battle five and a half seconds further back down the field is between Felipe Nasser, Juan Montoya and Ricky Taylor, who are all now closing up. And in fact, Pipo Durrani's right there as well. That's the 31 Cadillac, the six and seven Acuras and the 22 green and black. ESM Patron Nissan, and that's starting to hot up as well. In fact, count Colin Brown into that as well. Oh, very much so. Colin Brown is yeah. right there in the 54. That's the core autosport, so I didn't see Colin there when I watched them go by. I glanced away to the timing screen. And by the way, Colin Brown has got the fastest lap of the race, set all the way back on lap 15, a 118.914. One si yeah, 16. Oh, point 16, nine. sorry. Yeah, and the, the lap record, by by the way, around here, the race lap record was a 17.9, set last year by Olivier Pla. Um, I'm, I'm surprised it's been broken by that much, quite frankly. Now, the, prob the, the, the problem for Harry Ticknell is, That's don't Colin get Brown carried away you, here. You, don't, you only need to re win the race by a minimum margin. The harder you push, the more, the, the more work you put through your tyres. You want to make sure your tyres are good for the end of the stint. Still a fair way to go before he makes his final pit stop. It'll be about another uh, 15 minutes. So don't push too hard now because you're out in front. You don't need to be uh, 20 seconds out in front. Except there could be a difference in the fuel fill that they know they've got to overcome. Yeah, they, they, will stop. Need, they will need a little bit more fuel than, than yeah. some of the other guys. So he wants to make sure he has a, a, a lead. And he's right in amongst that battle in GTD we were talking about from 6th now down to 11th. Three Ferraris are three wide down the front straight. And Harry Tinkle goes to the right-hand side. Then he dives to the left. My goodness me! That's like being on Forza Motorsport. Quite extraordinary stuff from the Englishman. What a run through the Ferraris there. It was like somebody dropped a prototype into a Ferrari challenge race. And there's a, a rubbing continental tyre on the left rear of Gunnar Jeanette's number 63, WeatherTech Ferrari, and immediately Osnegri takes advantage. And Gunnar's going to have to stop. He's being clipped on the left rear, just above the exhaust pipe. And that's pushed the bodywork onto the wheel, Townsend Bell having a look there in the 64, the bright red car, and then it's York Bergmeister and Christina Nielman. Christina Nielsen looking very racy indeed, hanging on to the back of that group of cars and only about uh, 10 minutes or so away from handing that car back to Pat Long to finish. In the meantime, sheer Adam, bad news for Ford fans. The 66 is going back behind the wall. It did a lap, and now it's going back to retire. I, yeah, mission accomplished. I think move it to... It's moved it ahead of Nick Tandy. That's all they needed that car to do. So they've gone from seventh in class to eight to sorry, from eighth in class to seventh in class, and that's exactly what they've done. They've scored a bit of extra points there. Now here is Juan Montoya third place coming through the GT Daytona field ahead of him Felipe Nas has pulled away by about a second or so but Harry Tinknell now 10 seconds to the good and just driving so hard people to Rani right in the thick of the fight has been passed by Colin Burt Brown so Colin now up to fifth position he's how it stands at the top of the field 55 Mazda the sole crystal red car 10 seconds ahead of the pack Felipe Nasser the red and white Wheel and Engineering, 31 Cadillac, has three quarters of a second on Juan Montoya in the white and orange accurate Team Penske car. Then Ricky Teal is three tenths further back in the similar coloured number seven. That's the team car. Colin Brown in the white and tangerine. Almost looks a similar colour scheme, actually. Got a little bit more blue on it, particularly on the fin. The 54 is the best of the P2 cars in fifth position. Then people Durrani in the very distinctive Tequila Patron ESM Kermit Green and Black car. And behind them, Ryan DL, the team car, is only into the five seconds further back and is gaining on them by about a second a lap at the moment. 
as they have to deal with GT traffic. That's a great battle for second on down in the prototype and overall standings. Remember, this time next year, we will be talking about two prototype classes. The Ferraris spreading out across the field, across the start line, right in front of Harry Tinknell. And he did a good job to get through them without uh, doing himself any damage. What I can't tell you is where the damage on Gunnar Jeanette's car came from. It wasn't there when the leader went by him. Was there a Brown. slight clip? No, there wasn't. Colin Harry Brown's managed to find clearly. a way past Pipo Durrani. Yes, just mentioned that. Yeah. yeah. It's a big button. No, no, it's all right. Only by half a second, though. I, I've got a feeling there was uh, quite a bit of jiggery and, if you will, porkery going yes. on it's in the passing of the GT cars. 99 has got past 52 as well. That's for position for eighth place. Slavo Jakob wow. has, been doing, has been doing a nice job in that. AFS PR1 Matheson Motorsports oh, machine. Oh, up at the corkscrew, a little mistake by Durrani, locks up the left front Continental tyre. Montoya, uh, Ricky Taylor rather, Colin Brown and people Durrani, uh, Durrani absolutely there. The 66 Ford listed now as a retirement now that it's taken that one extra position from Nick Tandy's 911 Porsche. Harry Tinknell, by the way, showing fabulous split second ju judgment to get through those cars get a chance to watch the overhead shots his manager and mentor Alan McNish will be delighted with what he's seeing from the Langley Englishman Durrani with a bit of an overlap on Colin Brown wants that position back goes Sleeping down the inside nasty. of turn three that's a fabulous over and under manoeuvre by people Durrani and Jinx to the right that was a bit naughty people just puts Colin on the curb at turn four as they go past the number 33, that's Jerome Blakemolen, who's second place in GTD in the mainly white with the green and black stripes on that 33 AMG GT4. Under the hour to go, Jeremy, now 55 minutes. And almost time that the prototypes can make their final stop. Almost. Yeah, yeah, about, yeah about 10 minutes away yeah. from that. So we're talking about seven or eight laps away at the moment. We've completed 60 laps. Impressed with Tinknell at the head of the field. It's gone through again there in a uh, 1.19.459. And he's now 13 seconds ahead of the battle for second, headed up by Philippe Nasser. Then it's Juan Montoya right in behind Philippe. Felipe is doing a cracking job to hold the charging Juan Montoya back. It'll be full service for all of these cars. There'll be no thought, not a scintilla of doubt about whether you're going to change the tyres or not. Because all of these cars are being pushed very hard. Confirmation on the timing screen and from race control of the Turner BMW retirement we told you about earlier on. Their Twitter feed seeing a transmission cooler was split with uh, the thump from behind. Fabulous overtake manoeuvre by Pete Durrani to get himself back in front of Colin Brown. And, oh, and then he, ah, he didn't jink to the right. He actually spun up the Continental tyres and slid to the right. It was actually a pretty good save there. Now, what's happened there? Because Durrani has got by Ricky Taylor. Yes, he has. Ricky Taylor is now in between Durrani and Colin Brown, so Pipo Durrani has got the message to go and he's pulled the pin and now up to fourth position for Pipo Durrani and the 22 ESM Tequila Patron Nismo Power Prototype. And he's pulling away the moment he got some clear air. So Durrani, the man on the move at the moment, other than Harry Tinknell at the head of the field. Let's take a quick Cadillac in-race update with 54 minutes to go. GTD, Alvaro Parent by 5.9 seconds. On Jerome Blake, I'm all in, in the 33. So Acura from Mercedes, from Dominic Bauman, still in third position in the 14. As his teammate is just losing a position, that's Jack Hawksworth losing fifth to Andy Lally in the black and green Audi. And just a, ahead of them is Brian Sellers in fourth place in the championship leading 48. 
Christina Nielsen all over the Ferrari of Gunnar Jeanette, the 63 WeatherTech car, which I don't think took tyres at its last stop. I think they, I think they, they tried to get track position there and sent him early. They did get track position, but that's hurting them now. Brian Sellers up another position there. Did you just, yeah, did you yeah. just mention it? Yeah. yeah. So it, the, 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 the Lexus is certainly struggling right now, aren't they? You're right. And they are, they are very much traction limited on the rear end. We've seen that uh, throughout the season. Huge amount of gunk offline, and not just the marbles. This softball-sized pieces of rubber there. Here comes the number six of Juan Montoya, looming large in the mirrors of Felipe Naza. I think Brian Sellers is in good shape at the moment. He's got one more stop to do, but he's getting better out of his tyre. I think he's going for third anytime soon because he's right with Dominic Bauman, having disposed of one Lexus. And Andy Lally's gone past the Lexus of Hawksworth as well now. So GTD, 88, 33, 14 and 48. Acura Mercedes, Lexus, Lamborghini, 12 seconds between that lot. Antonio Garcia leads for Corvette, the number three team, leading the championship, leading the GT Le Mans standings right now. From Jonathan Edwards, who's three and a half seconds back in the first of the BMWs, the number 24, and then Tom Milner. And it's BMW, it's a Chevrolet BMW, Chevrolet BMW with Conor De Filippi in fourth position. In prototype, Harry Tinknell pulling away from the field. The 55 Mazda leading by more than 13 seconds over Philippe Nazar in second for the Cadillac number 31, the Wheel and Engineering squad. Juan Montoya unable to get through. 15 seconds now the lead from first to second. Montoya following in the wheel tracks of NASA in the number six Acura. Then Pipo Durrani closing in. He's now within two seconds. And that's your Cadillac race update with 51 minutes to go. Cadillac real races don't take days off. Marvellous stuff. And Colin Brown now all over. Ricky Taylor, and since people Durrani's got through, yeah, he's uh, pulled two seconds on this right, battle. And he's also closing in on that uh, on that battle ahead of him for second place between Nasser and uh, Montoya. And also, by the way, uh, Ryan DL is closing up on that Colin Brown Stephen Simpson battle. Ricky Taylor, Colin Brown Stephen Simpson, and uh, up to third position, Brian Sellers in GT Daytona. My goodness, didn't take him long to get through. He's got seven and a half seconds on the two cars that he leads in the championship. Championship leader in GTD is third in class. Second is the third in class 33 Mercedes and leading the second in class in the championship. Leading in the GT Daytona standings right now is Alvaro Parent, the 86. That's the great Acura. This is starting to hot up, Jeremy, and there's one more pit stop for everybody, I reckon. Yeah. Two or three laps time. Yeah, getting in there. Into the pit lane window. I don't know if you want, I don't know if you dare stay out. Nissan number two on the front straight. That's Ryan DL, he's dropped back and there's a problem with the Nismo engine. Big smoke coming out of the left rear. Now is that bodywork damage or is it an exhaust blow? He's got some... That might be tyre, actually. That might be tyre. There might be bodywork pushed onto that. Although, having said that, it's when he accelerates. No, it's suspension. It's suspension. It's suspension and bodywork rubbing. Oh, Ryan DL, how unlucky. He'd been charging up to that battle behind Colin Brown for sixth position. And the smoke coming from the forward part he's lost the cheese wedge so there's been contact there on the left hand side what in Europe is called the legality panel that stops you being able to see the back of the wheel that's the regulations in ACO racing and into the pit lane is Tom Milner for Corvette number four Shea Adam brilliant strategy again by Corvette racing hoping that a yellow comes out and their car will be clear and away Tommy Milner brings the number four Corvette that was the pole sitter 
in. They are doing fuel only. It was Gustavo Jakobin and the number 52 AFS PR1 Matheson Orica who made the contact with Ryan Dial in the number two. Fuel only for Tommy Milner. He gets it going again and leaves the pit lane. It's still open as Ryan Dial brings that number two onto the pits. They're plugging in fuel and looking at the car doing tires as it's up on the air jacks, but it's going to be a little bit more work. Yeah, I, I think there's more to that than that. It was very odd. It was when he was accelerating, which is why I immediately thought they had a turbo problem perhaps on that uh, GT3 GTR engine, which is what powers the prototype. But then got a chance to see it as it was going past us and it was coming from in front of the back wheel. And I noticed that the carbon fiber, almost like the, uh, like the mud flap that's behind the wheel, if you will, was missing. Meantime, his team car, Pete Motorani, has caught Juan Montoya as into the pit lane comes Ricky Taylor. This is the first of the prototype last stops, if that makes sense, yeah? Fuel and tires make perfect sense to me, Tom, but I'm just special. Oh, Here. hang on a second. Down at the first corner, what Juan Montoya goes down the inside of Pete Motorani and has a little look. Virani was right round the outside and looked to have got the position, but left the door open on the inside and one needed no second invitation, but the cutback at turn three spells curtains for the Colombian and Durrani's back through again as he cuts no, through the traffic. He's made the pass because he was behind number six car, so. Yes, yes, that's yes, what I'm saying, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Durrani went by across the start finish line almost, got hung out on the outside of turn one. Montoya goes back through at the exit of turn two, and then the pass is only completed on the run down from three to four by Pipo Durrani. This is a good charge by Durrani. He's coming to the end of this stint. He'll be in the pit shortly. Shea, sorry, I interrupted you there. That's all right. Uh, it was fuel tires for Ricky Taylor, as he was the first of our last stoppers, as you rightly say, and Ryan Diel back on the circuit. They were able to repair the damage on the pit lane as the 31 and the 22 both have come on. So the wheel and engineering catalog, which has to go all the way down the pit lane, followed it by the three Corvette. So again, another one of the Corvettes following in for GTL and pit stop. Pippa Durrani is getting new Continental tires and fuel as they work on the service for that car. And the 31 wheel and engineering Cadillac hits its marks. They are doing fuel and tires for Philippe Nazar. And for the Corvette, again, fuel only. That was a heck of an in-lap by Durrani because he closed right up onto the 31. The wheel yeah. and engineering Cadillac, he was right on the tail of that car into the pit lane. And it's good to get in now, get that pit stop done early because you're then not going to be on fresh tyres. Anybody else out now who's in a battle with somebody else needs to get into the pits. Uh, the good news for Harry Tinkley, he's way out in front. Uh, he should be able to, you know, he's got a 20 second lead now over everybody else. So he can afford to be a little bit more conservative, make sure he comes in and makes a clean pit stop. Instant responsibility for car 52. The Yak attack is back in business and will have to do the drive through for hitting the back of Ryan DL's number two. That's it. Not going to give Ryan his positions back. That'll be an unhappy Scotsman. Early decision made by race control as Ryan, as Ricky Taylor, excuse me, goes back through past the emerging number 31 of Philippe Nazar in the pit lane. We've got uh, the first and second place cars. We have uh, Juan Montoya is in making his final stop fuel and sticker tires for the Penske driver and for the 55 fuel and tires for Harry Tinkle's master. He is already out and moving while the Penske is still stationary. So that puts Colin Brown in the lead. The Orica with slightly less fuel since the last time it raced and with 10 kilos more, which won't be helping the tyre wear here. Montoya is down and away, stayed in the number six Acura Team Penske prototype. Spot on, 45 minutes or there, thereabouts, isn't it? To go absolutely what Jeremy said it would be. So now these cars are fueled to the end, come what may. And Colin Brown surely has to think about coming in, as has Stephen Simpson, the three Oricas now. The 54th court, the 99 gain score car, the 85 JDC Miller car, all out at the front of the field, but yeah. they've been out there for 25 laps, and their tyres 
will not be giving them the performance of the cars that have come out the pits, even though their fuel load is further down. And, of course, if the pits get closed now, they're in real trouble. Yeah, and, and they're, they're, they're losing time. They're going to be losing time here now. They, they need to make their pits up as soon as they can. And there's a change between the two Acura Team Penske cars as Ricky Taylor, with his tyres up the temperature, steams past his teammate Juan Montoya. And that's the advantage. He's been out there two or three laps more, and he was way back on Montoya before the pit stops. And that's what Jeremy's talking about. It's a performance premium that you get on the new tyres and whilst people are staying out there you can pull maybe two or three seconds a lap out of them and that's yep. exactly what Ricky Taylor's done now of course he's got to manage those tyres for the extra two or three laps towards the end of the race but he's managed to leapfrog his teammate by taking that final pit stop before Juan Montoya in the classes still waiting for the final pit stops for the GTD cars, Alvaro Parent by five seconds. 86 Acura from 33 Mercedes, Jerome Blegamol and then Brian Sellers holding at about four <coughs> seconds back in third position for the leading, class leading Lamborghini coming down to the final corner now as he steers wide to let Colin Brown go down the inside in the tangerine white and blue. Number 54 Orica that leads this WeatherTech Sports Car Championship penultimate round of the season. Must have been a bad stop for number 31 car, I think, of Felipe Nasser, because he's come out of the whole, that tr the tail end of the, that trainer car, despite making his pits. He made the pits up on the same lap as number 22 car. Number 22 car is, uh, well, quite a long way ahead of him. Had an awful outlap, Jeremy. Uh, very slow out of the pits and was passed by uh, one of the Penske's at least as he was still getting up to speed. Shea Adam has the fifth, uh, has the 77 Master in the pit lane. 77 Master is in, and remember, this is the car that had trouble getting going on its last pit stop. So we'll have to see if that is an issue again. They've finished the tire change, just waiting on fuel, as well as the 85 JDC Miller Motorsport car. It's in, Simon Trummer staying in, but new tires for him and fuel. Both of the Lexuses are in, and they are doing the fuel and tire right in front of me. There's a giant puff of white smoke that is in the left front of Jack Hawksworth's car. That's the red one. As a slow stop for the 14, they are having trouble getting the left rear tire change that that means that they have swapped around on the pit lane the 15 is ahead of the car that has won two races this year looked like the air jack was sagging a little bit now they're changing the rear tires fueling has been done for a long time as colin brown the leader of the races in the pit lane lexus just got even worse because they stalled dominic bauman trying to get it back underway but colin brown not worried about that the mazda is still in its pit box as well so a very bad day for the sister car of the leader colin brown 54 his his marks exact he is getting another new set of continentals so he knows what it's like to go out on the used rubber he knows what it's like on the new rubber and he chose the latter as they do just enough fuel and the 99 games go the red dragon leads at weathertech raceway laguna seca as colin brown waits for the last drop of fuel this is not a place where you want to take a gamble and his dad one of the brightest minds on any pit box anywhere in the world knows just that fuel drop comes out colin brown sent more action from our Continental Tower pit lane reporter, Shea Adam, doing a great job in the sunshine. The two accurate Team Penske prototypes out dragging each other. It's a bit of a drag race down towards the first corner, and Montoya tries round the outside of Ricky Taylor. Juan, what are you doing? Really, man, he's just leaning on his teammate there. He will go through into turn three. Ah, oh, dear me. It's a very wound up Juan Montoya this afternoon. He's uh, at times been absolutely brilliant this year, at times been somewhat erratic, and has had a couple of talking to's from race control as well this year. I and really he's really revved up this afternoon. He is, isn't he? Yeah. I, I can't understand why number 54 car and, and the number 99, both of which are pretty quick, stayed out this long because so it's exactly the same happening in the early stages of the race. The people that came in sooner are making up ground. Well, the 99 Gainscore car comes in from the lead. Shea Adam. Missed its marks, John. The 99 came in a little bit too far ahead, and the fueler is having trouble getting the probe into the car. It's lost about three seconds trying to see if it would stretch far enough. They are, have the car up on the air jacks doing a fuel and the tire change at the same time. Ticknell is in the final corner, and he goes through. Now passing the Red Dragon, he re-inherits the lead at the number 33 Mercedes is in for its final stop fuel and tires for that car. It leaves well ahead of the Red Dragon. It came in just behind the Orica. 
as now Stephen Simpson gets it fired and back <laughs> underway. So the revised positions in our Cadillac in-race update at the front of the field sees the master of Harry Tickman leading by nearly 10 seconds from P. Portorani, who's put together a couple of brilliant stints in the number 22 ESM Tequila Patron prototype. Third place for Juan Montoya, and he took that position by just gently reminding Ricky Taylor that he's the senior party here between turns two and three. Taylor in fourth position, 55, 22, six and seven. Then Felipe Nasser in the 31, Whelan, Cadillac, and making up the top six, Colin Brown, back out of the circuit in the 54, Oregon, which will be good to the end of the race. All of the cars now have made their last pit stops in the prototype category. Now, let's, what about GT Daytona? Here's a significant moment from second place. Brian Sellers had got in the second, but comes in for the final pit stop for our championship leading, number 48. This is the Lamborghini Shea Adam with the Continental Tire Pit Lane update. Fuel and brand new tires going on that number 48 Lamborghini. As they have already completed the right side, has Paul Miller's crew, and they go to work on the left. There is enough fuel in the car to make it to the end. They take the fuel probe out. Now they are losing time with the tire change, but they are going for all four tires more valuable if you can even say that then fuel ryan sellers is out yes and that's because of course they stopped not that long ago they were one of the latter ones to stop they took the advantage of getting in so 36 and a half minutes for brian sellers to go to the end of the race alvaro Perez still needs to stop one more time not sure about andy lally yeah he's gonna have to stop in second bergmeister's gonna have to stop I, I think Sellers could well be in the box seat here if he gets a couple of really quick laps in and a bit of clear air. At yeah. IMSA Radio, if you want to talk to us, don't forget, use the hashtag Michelin PRT, Michelin Post Race Tech, coming up after the checkered flag on RS2 IMSA Radio. Yeah, GTD, very, very interesting at the moment. The performance premium of the new tyres there still evident Jeremy but not quite as much as on the prototypes oh yeah no it's every bit as much as on really? the oh yes absolutely right and and that's why they need to get the number 86 car into the pit lane uh, as soon as they possibly can Ozzy Negri is doing a fantastic he's job just in the in pits the now car. yeah he is on pit lane now Ozzy Negri telling me this morning at Marion's when we were having breakfast he said uh, all we've done all weekend is run all tyres we just want to get the balance of the car right on all tyres, so that at the end of the race, we know it's a known set of circumstances. Great idea. Colin Brown then with Philippe Nasser right ahead of him as they go past the IMSA broadcast booth from four to five in the sunshine. 35 minutes to go. What a cracker this has turned out to be after a couple of false starts, or at least stutter steps. People to Rani fastest lap of that car's race last time around with 35 minutes to go 17-6 still half a second away from Colin Brown's stonking lap on lap 15 remember the P2 cars have been slowed down to give the manufacturers in the DPI a chance but you can't performance balance the driver or the team and the 54 crew have done their part here and put Colin Brown in with an opportunity having a look round the inside then the outside the two Penske's are at it again at turn two and again there's a little touch this time it's Ricky Taylor who just I think kissed the right way spin for the leader Tignell spins at turn five Oh my goodness now has he kept it running he drops to the inside he's there losing, goes to the lead so he that was on his outlap, was it? No, 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 no. He was, uh, he was, uh, I think maybe he was trying to get past the 52 car. He stalled I didn't it. see it. Can't get it through. Durrani's into the lead. And through goes people to Durrani. And Harry can't get into the traffic because there's so much of it coming. Now, has he got the, the master running? Trying to start it. There's no power from the engine. Cycling through everything. Now he gets it going. Beautiful spin turn. Too little, too late. Has Montoya gone through as well? I don't think. Oh he yeah, 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 yeah. They're long Montoya's gone. through. Ricky Taylor's through. 
Oh, dear me. Well, drama, piled upon drama. And Harry Tinknell with a hit from guess who? Gustavo Yakerman as he was trying to put a lap on him. Yeah. Oh, dear. I figured it probably was. Oh, dear. Yakerman again. Involved Look, there, here. There was there was no need to be pr to be pressing the the envelope there for Tinkler. We didn't see what happened. I'd like to get a. I don't know whether we're going to get any any pictures of it, but look, he, he was got a, he had a lead of ten seconds uh, over the next guy. Uh, he was controlling the race. There's half an hour to go. You don't need to take any risks. Well, particularly not when Gustavo Jakobsen's. He's got. I mean, he's got a, a reputation, Gustavo. Sometimes it's uh, a little but bit un. Un, he's uh, just not close enough. Well, I'm sorry. He's just not close enough. That's not Gustavo's fault. I've criticised Gustavo in the f in, in, in the past, and he he has, uh, as I say, a bit of a reputation for being a wild man. But Tinknell, the leader of the race, isn't there. No. He comes up the inside at turn five. He's halfway alongside the car. Gustavo has to turn in at some point. He can't ask Scotty to beam him up, and that is a mistake from the Englishman. I'm afraid. You could argue that Jakobsen about to go a lap down could actually have been a little more forceful trying to stay on the league lap. Reviewed, no action yeah. from that, and that is the, absolutely the right call. Absolutely the right call. And I'll, I'll say straight away, I've been critical of Yak in the past, and uh, certainly he's already been penalised in this race for hitting the back of... Ryan DL wasn't it and ruining DL's race but that one absolutely not now meantime new fourth position Colin Brown's gone through he got by Philippe Nasser last time around yeah, right. so let's do a quick Cadillac in race update at the top of the field Pete Tarani leads now by ten and a half seconds from Juan Montoya and the battle of the two Penske's is on six versus seven that could end up in a pile of carbon fibre and somebody stomping off in a huff. Colin Brown is only three and a half seconds behind in fourth position. 22 6, 7 and 54. 54 going past the. Uh, Colin Brown going past the 31 Cadillac into turn three, and that was a clean move. Colin Brown full of confidence at the moment. In GT Le Mans, it's BMW first and second. John Edwards and Conor De Filippi separated by 8.3 seconds, 24 from 25. Then Lawrence Van Tour five seconds further back. And the Corvettes, which remember have taken their last stops. Garcia and Milner are fourth and fifth in respectively the three and four. Parente needs to stop in the next half an hour for the leader in the Acura in GTD, the 86 car. So does Andy Lally in the 44 in second. And York Bergmeister is in third, but that will not stay the same for long in our Cadillac in-race update as Shea Adam has the GT Daytona leader in the pit lane and second place as well. MSR bringing their grey Acura, the only one left in the race, back in. And it is fuel and tires for Alvaroso. He will be very happy. A slight delay on the right rear. They couldn't get the old Continental off. Now they get the new one on. The fueling probes have been out for about 10 seconds as Lally still stationary on his pit stop as well. Now both cars have dropped off the air jacks. Alvaro goes out now. Bergmeister has gone through. Sellers has gone through. Alvaro leaves the pit lane and Lally is rolling now too. Spot on shit, watching as the cars went past. It's York Bergmeister that now leads in GTD. And he is fueled to the end of the race. Second, Jerome Blake and So 73 Porsche from 33 Mercedes from 48 championship leading Brian Sellers. And they have had the performance premium of putting those new Continentals on first. And they've gone through. Parent weaving left and right, trying to Make sure that he gets his new Continentals up to temp and pressure. It'll take him a wee while. Durrani's just gone through. Harry Tinknell's just done his fastest lap of the race. 117-1. The two Penske's absolutely side by side. Going into five. Here we go, look at this. Going into five. And again, these guys, there's clearly no team orders here. Tim Sindrick is here. I saw him earlier on in the week. Roger Penske was, 
at Indianapolis for the Brickyard 400. That's been postponed till tomorrow, so I don't know if he's made his way over here. But Montoya and Taylor are duking it out as if th this was the last lap of a Formula Ford race. Montoya just about holding on as Ricky Taylor picked his way through the traffic and had a look down the inside into Turn 5. And Montoya just holding on as they come to complete another lap. Through they go with Colin Brown just sitting about a couple of seconds behind them. No, Ricky Taylor did get through. Yeah. Ricky Taylor did get through. Yeah. The seven ahead of the six. That's right. Montoya was blocked by a couple of those other two cars in the middle of turn four, and uh, and Taylor had a good run through there, was able to make that pass. Just carried a lot more. He got, kind of hung back just a little bit, and when as soon as Montoya was block, blocked and had to uh, li lift right off the gas, that gave Taylor the opportunity to get past. How? Colin Brown's not far behind him, are No, they? Colin, Colin's doing the right thing. He's just taking another eight tenths out of them last time around. How many and the, times? And the man to behind those two, by the way, is not the race leader. No, no. It is number that's 77 a car that's a lap down. Yeah, correct. Yeah, that's it's uh, that, Tristan yeah. Nunes, isn't it? It's not the Erst, erstwhile leader. What have Mazda got to do? to win no, here not so many times. Got, not to make any mistakes. Well, that was a power Porsche keys to the race. No penalties, no contact. You've got to keep it on the track. I mean, yeah, yes, he's a race leader. Uh, yeah, and, and the rule... Over here, if... The, the rules are different to Europe. I, in Europe, you'd get the blue flags and you'd have to get out of the way. You don't have to get out of the way here. Well... I'll be honest, I, if you, one, yeah, in, 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 in endurance same. racing, Jeremy, if you're about to go a lap down, if the leader can't put a clean move on you, you're not going to give it up. Absolutely right. And, and that, that's in all forms of endurance uh, racing. Uh, this isn't Formula One where you can, you go past four blue flags and then you've got to do a joker lap halfway around the town <laughs> before they allow you back on or whatever it is. That's right. Uh, and, and, and interestingly, the number 22 car, by the way, Pippa Duran, has just made the pass on Gustavo Jakobin. Yeah. Uh, I didn't see where he did it, but he did. It. He obviously had no dramas there, and he's through and away now with a 14-second lead over the uh, two Acuras. Yeah. 55 stopped with 43 minutes to go and got out in the lead cycle back through to the lead rather after the three Oricas, the p2 cars had made their pit stops best of the Oricas at the moment of the p2 cars the global cars colin brown 17 seconds off the lead but just about a second away from the battling acura twins of ricky taylor who's now in second in the seven and juan montoya in third in the sixth that isn't over i'll tell you that now that isn't over and there's no way anybody He's going to tell Juan Montoya not to try and pass his teammate. He's going to have a radio problem. The only thing that will stop him passing his teammate is if Colin Brown gets between them. And that's what Colin's trying to do now, down into the hairpin, the Andretti hairpin. GTLM, two BMWs. Eight and a half seconds between John Edwards and Conor De Filippi. 24 from 25 from Lawrence Van Ter. Getting good championship points for the 9-1-2. Vanto in fifth position along with Earl Bamba on 251 points at the moment. The two BMWs behind him, so he'd be making up points on all of the cars ahead of him as we go into the final round at Motul Petit Le Mans in October. And uh, but by staying out uh, one, two, three, four, five or six laps longer in GT Daytona, the number 86 car has fallen behind the number 48 yes. car. Yes, oh yes. The 48 car was in on lap 70. Uh, for some reason, they kept the uh, Alvaro Parent out for another half dozen laps, uh, and uh, the number 48 car was able to uh, make use of the fact they had fresher tyres uh, and get ahead of it. So that's, that's some... Bergmeister yeah. still has to pit from the lead well, in I'm the 73 sure. car. He was in on 47, he came in on lap 47. He did, which was about an hour and 12 minutes to go. I, I, well, if he can go, Christina Nielsen can go as well. She pitted on exactly the same lap, and she's got the same car. Correct. So the likelihood is if if they can go in the lead, maybe they're rolling the dice. They're not in championship contention, are they, in the 73 Park Place Porsche? Right. Brian Sellers is closing on Jerome Blake-Molin. 
in the battle for second and third. And remember, the 33 car is in third place in the championship as well. So there's championship implications there as... Colin Brown split. Scott, Colin Brown, well, yeah. Tim Sindrick will have breathed a sigh of relief there that Colin Brown's got between Ricky Taylor and Juan Montoya. A couple of heart-stopping moments for the Penske pit wall earlier on where they were trading bits of carbon fibre. Passing them backwards and forwards. Jörg Bergmeister leads GTD in that dark grey, red and silver machine from Park Place. I'll be going to see Park Place in the week between Rensport and Petit Le Mans in a very special uh, Panamera Panamerica drive that you'll hear on IMSA Radio. Looking forward to that. More details of that uh, in the next couple of weeks on Midweek Motorsport and also in our Rensport coverage here on the RSL network of channels. But what else am I going to do when I've got a weekend between two races here in the States but visit race tracks, race shops and drive nice cars? Sounded like a great idea at the time. And you'll be able to drive at coast to coast or near coast to coast run. Share Adam with some very important news in this Continental Tire Pit Lane update. Um, who is one of the best minds in terms of pit boxes on fuel saving that was demonstrated at Road America in the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge race? Uh, that would be Mike Johnson. And guess whose pit box he sits on in this series? Is it a GTD pit box? It is. It, would it be the Park Place pit box? It would. <laughs> and they have been saving fuel since the start of Bergmeister's stint. Right. They are not pitting him again. Right. Okay. It's going to be amusing. Seven seconds between Bergmeister and Blake Amolan. Blake Amolan does not have to save fuel. And he has newer tyres, crucially, on that 33. AMG Mercedes as same story, even newer tyres for Brian Sellers. Just by a lap, mind you, on the Lamborghini. Those Continentals then on the 33 and the 48. No sense in leaving any meat on them at the end of the race, lads. Get the wick turned up. Yeah, Christina Nielsen lost a couple of positions on that last lap, also to number 40, uh, number 15 from Jack Hawksworth. He's gone yes, through. Yes, and the number 44 car also yeah. of Andy Lally. Yeah, both and, on newer tyres, Jeremy. Uh, that's right. And, and uh, Jerome Blechemolen is uh, under increasing pressure, and I think now from Brian Sellers. And Alvaro Parent is about five seconds back in the fourth position in GT Daytona. Yeah, remember our Porsche keys to the race. Don't be f a fool on fuel. But you can be fooled by other people's fuel, and maybe Park Place have lulled everyone into a false sense of security. The key thing here is, will they be tired out? at the end and run out of grip they might have the grunt from the flat six but if you can't get it down onto the tarmac doesn't matter second place is about to go the way of the orica extraordinary stuff brilliant stuff from colin brown this is like a brave heart moment isn't it you can give me 10 kilograms you can take off three liters but you can never take colin brown speed Closing down on Ricky Taylor. And that is second position. And within a lap or so, he's going to go. He's got tyres, has Colin, that's five laps younger than Ricky Taylor. That's not all of what is giving him the pace. It is the brown factor. He is on full attack mode, military settings. P. Portorani is 20 seconds up the road. There is a ESM car right in front of them. That isn't the leader. Meantime, Harry Tignall fighting back as well. Yeah, that's uh, Felipe in. Nasser right ahead of him there. Yeah, and that is the battle Four for position. fifth and sixth, correct. correct. Wow, this is heating up. This is heating up. No worries on fuel for any of the prototypes. The fuel run that is going on at the moment is BMW and Porsche in GTLM. And Shea Adam, are they going to try to go to the end? They are looking really chill on both pit really? boxes. Yep. Okay. Well, they, st they stopped on lap 48, their lap 48. 
and they are currently on their lap 86 oh, good heavens really 18 minutes to go and they think they can make it okay uh 24 from 25 from 912 the gtlm runners bmw bmw porsche gt daytona york bergmeister is going to have to stretch a very long way indeed he was last in on lap 47 he's currently on lap 83 good thing he's tall if he's going to have to stretch all the way at the end says Shea adam which made me giggle there jerome blake and more that stop on lap 70 full rich then for the 33 and the lead is down to 3.2 seconds this might not come down to fuel it'll come down to grip for bergmeister and Brian Sellers is just following Jerome Blakemore at the moment. Down to the pit lane, Shea Adam with bad news if you're a Blue Oval fan. The number 67 has just gone behind the wall, which makes it a double DNF for the Blue Ovals. It's going to be sixth and seventh positions for the two Fords this weekend. And with three manufacturers, Check that four manufacturers ahead of them. BMW, Porsche, Chevrolet, North. Three manufacturers ahead of them. They will get a fourth place manufacturer's point. That's going to be the biggest turnaround possible as far as the championship points for the manufacturers are concerned. And the drivers, well, I'll wait for Jeremy to work that out at the end of the race. But it's looking to be a good day so far for the Porsche of Lawrence Vanter and Earl Bamba, and not at the worst here for the Chevy Corvette either, particularly not for the number four car, who might well move up a couple of places here. Meantime, in prototype, let's give you a battle. Philippe Nasser and Harry Tinknell. Harry will be on fire beneath his Nomex balaclava and his racing helmet. He will not be happy, and he will want that position. He's got clearly a very fast prototype underneath him but fifth position which is what you get if he goes by NASA is not what he's looking for meantime a slightly dusty front end to the front end of York Bergmeister's Porsche but and he gap, still leads the gap from first to second there we are one two three it was GT Daytona heading up the hill to turn six he's pulled in about three quarters of a second each of the last Correct. three laps yeah it was three seconds between first and second last time around it's now only 3.3 seconds between first second and third the last 15 minutes are going to be painful for York Bergmeister. They might make it on fuel, but they're not going to get it on grip. Remember how Porsche keys to the race, grip, not grunt. Don't find yourself out of tyres at the end. And that's exactly what's happening. Now, that said, York Bergmeister is pretty good at defending, but I'm not sure he's got the tools Uh, down in GT Le Mans at the moment. It's BMW, BMW, Porsche, Corvette, Corvette. 30 seconds between the remaining cars that are running. An extraordinary battle of, an, of attrition in GT Le Mans, not at all by their own hand for the most part. Accident and incident are plenty. Colin Brown, a couple of seconds away from Ricky Taylor, who's picked up the pace on the last lap around. <laughs> Not by much, but there can't be much left in those tyres. Ricky, five laps worse off on tyre wear than Colin Brown, but Colin's had to fight his way through the field. GT Dicker, the car's uh, close, much closer again on this uh, most recent lap. Just one and a half seconds now from first to second. Uh, and the third place car, Brian Sellers, is right with Jerome Blechemollen. Watch out for a little bit of tricky team tactics here as the 77 of Tristan Nunez might be able to help out his teammate as Felipe Naza is coming to put a lap on him. Oh, Harry Tinkler goes down the inside again at turn five and he came from a long way back there. And Nasser has done him a favour by not turning in. He went what? to turn in and then had to give up the corner. Championship, big picture. That's exactly yeah, good what Felipe Nasser was looking at. Good point. Had to keep his wits about him, though, yes, didn't he? Yes, he did. Very heads up driving by Felipe Nasser. Yeah, good point, Jeremy. 
Well, a race that has been characterised by full course yellows after contact for the most part. Even the last full course yellow that we had to retrieve the uh, turn of BMW, the liquid molly car, that was caused by contact in the back of the car, breaking a transmission cooler. Bill Oberlin, Harry Tinknell trying the dive underneath at turn five that cost him the lead. What, half an hour ago? Not that, probably 20 minutes ago. Comes from a long way back, and this time decides to stick it. It was really heads up driving, wasn't it? Shea Adam with news of another car that is hors de combat. Good and bad for ESM today is the number two, the Tequila Patron ESM at Nismo of Ryan Dial gone behind the wall. Yeah, and that started with contact from Gustavo Jakobin, for which Jakobin was penalised. When DL was on a bit of a tear, actually, much as his teammate was a couple of places ahead of him, but Durrani now leads the race. It's a what-if moment, isn't it, for Ryan DL? 12 minutes to go. Now, how would you like a nice battle in GT Daytona between the championship contenders and York Bergmeister. You would, all right, let's give you one then. Bergmeister leads, he's got about two car lengths on third place in the championship, number 33, AMG BMW. He's got about four car lengths on leading the championship, number 48, Lamborghini, who has a car's length on Alvaro Parent, who is second in the championship, or at least his teammate, Catherine Legg is. That's 73 Porsche, 33 Mercedes, Brian Sellers in the 48 Lamborghini, and then Alvaro Parent in the 86 and they're all on the same piece of track. They've just ex exited turn five, and they're heading up the hill to turn six, for which they turn into now. Now, lots of calculation at Park Place Porsche to get them there on fuel. But what they're struggling for now is for grip. Now, to balance that out, the Porsche, of course, with the engine hanging out over the back wheels, does actually get a little more grip out of the corners than would a front or mid-engined car. And Jörg is already on fuel save mode, so that's a disadvantage. He's got very, very old tyres now, some 40 laps old, and everyone else is on full rich. As Brian Sellers tries to break the toe of Parent, the Lamborghini's not that quick in a straight line, and Parent has a look down the inside. Meantime, Gustavo Jakobin comes round the outside of both of them in the 52 prototype, the yellow and red machine. And he's not going to be held up. That car in ninth position, by the way. But off the lead lap. Uh, actually, not quite off the lead lap, just still on the lead lap. Who's that? No, I was right the first time. Go with your first instinct. Jakobin is off the lead yes, lap. Yes, yeah. yep. In fact, it is the Trummer 85 JDC Correct. car that's the first car off the lead lap, is it? Or is it Jakobin? No, it is Jakobin that's the first car off the lead lap. All Correct. right. I was right the first time. Just yep. go with the floor hanged off. Under 10 minutes to go. It's yeah. going to be the GTDs that are going to give us the run to the flag here. Keep an eye on the, uh, the mouse of Harry Ticknell. He's, uh, he's, he's closed by about a second on the number six car of Juan Pablo Montoya. That, that uh, could be the battle for fourth and fifth. Right now there's four seconds between them, so he's still got quite a bit of work to do to catch him, let alone get well, past him. Montoya's been held up by this battle that we're watching in GTT, Jeremy, so yep. I think you'll find that Collins closed right up on him here. And uh, that uh, Harry's closed right up on him there. Colin Brown has closed right up on Ricky Taylor in that battle that we were watching. Uh, the GTD battle that was early on. So that's Colin Brown catching Ricky Taylor for second place. And that one's not over yet either. 121-1 last time around from Ricky Taylor in that traffic. 119-8 for people Tirani. Hot property Tirani. And with uncertainty about ESM and then this more power prototypes for next year. He has 
been headhunted by the Action Express team. Drama in GTLM. They said they were good to the end. They were telling porkies. Shit, Adam. They're not putting new tires on. They are just doing a little bit of Mistake. fuel for John Edwards. And remember, last year, he came out of nowhere to save fuel and win the race. Not going to be the same this year. Well, the problem there is his teammates on exactly the same strategy, and so is Lawrence Van Tour. The Corvettes might yet be in with a chance here. Yeah. Antonio Garcia stopped some 20 laps later than the two cars ahead of him. 25 BMW from 912, B, uh, 912 Porsche. I think you've got to put two tyres on if you're going to splash for fuel, even with only eight minutes to go. Alvaro Parent has gone by. Brian Sellers, the championship leader, relegated to fourth position. But he's thinking big picture with seven and a half to go. And watch the Corvettes now. So much to watch here. Colin Brown catching Ricky Taylor for second. That's the seven Acura and the 54 Orica closing in. The two white Tangerine cars, a little more blue on the 54 that's closing in. In GT Le Mans, Conor De Filippi in the 25 white BMW. Can he make it to the end? His teammates just splashed Lawrence Van Tour in the same sort of fuel position in the 912 Porsche. Antonio Garcia, championship leader, hasn't won a race this year with his co-driver, Jan Magnussen. Has only, since he's been in the States, Jan Magnussen has only had a single year where he's not clocked at least one win in the championship. That year was 2012. He's got two more races this year to make sure it doesn't double that winless year tally. It's on here in pace as well as on fuel mileage. Six and a half minutes to go in GTD. Bergmeister somehow staying ahead on tyres that are well past their best with two, three hungry drivers behind him. This could all explode yet in GTD. Brian Sellers down to fourth position. He was passed at the final corner by Alvaro Parent, who came from a long way back. Brian saw him, gave him room. No need to fight that one. I think Blake Amolin's struggling for grip. And he's really struggling as Parent goes through. That's significant. Into turn three, significant for the championship. Blake Amolin's struggling for rear grip in the Mercedes Benz. And now. Will Brian Sellers be able to pounce as well? This has given a bit of breathing space to York Bergmeister. But Parent is coming and coming quickly. The GTD battle, which I thought that was an unequal struggle for York Bergmeister, he's managed to hold on for much longer than I expected. He's saving fuel. He's on laps that have done almost twice the distance than his the cars around him so still plenty of action with five to go him's the weathertech sports car championship at the weathertech raceway laguna seca facility and here comes Perrin for the lead he's not going to hang about looks to the inside of the final corner can't make it catherine leg pensive in the pit lane come on come on come on come on come on come on alvaro need this win need to grab some points back on Madison Snow and Brian Sellers, who at the moment are two places back. Goes down the inside of the first corner, it's done. A deep intake of breath from Catherine Legg and the MSR team. The lead goes. Now, has Brian Sellers got anything? Can he somehow make up a position? Bergmeister really struggling for rear grip in the Porsche. And Bergmeister's going to have to pit. Sheer Adam. They're dangling the pit board. He will no be way. in this time by. So that's third place for Sellers. Yeah, minimum of third place. But I think Blake and Orland struggling for grip at the back as well. Shouldn't be struggling for fuel. Retirement. Ryan DL in the number two. He went after contact. Attacked by Gustavo Jakobin. Breaking the back of the car. Also out. Much earlier on in the piece. We saw the uh, 96 Turner BMW. That was an attack as well. Oh, my goodness. Up the inside, the number seven, and this is second place. Ricky Taylor's broken suspension. 
Ricky Taylor broke in suspension after contact with the 63 Ferrari. And that's one of the Acuras done. He's going to drop right down. Here comes his teammate to get a place back. And it's suspension damage to the right rear. He's going to do well to get that back. That was all at the exit of the Andretti hairpin. I'll get back to the retirements later, or we'll talk about it in Mission and Post Race Tech. Drama in the last four minutes. Mazda have thrown this race away. Acura have thrown away a podium at least well, with that cut, that contact. They might be, they might still have a podium in number six car, but uh, Harry Tinkler is right, He's right with there. Him. A fired up Harry Tinkler as well. Yeah, at the very Tignall. least he wants the podium. Yeah, he wants a bit of redemption here. Tinknell versus Montoya for the last podium position and a couple of laps to go. Yeah. Meantime. It'll be white flag next time. Meantime, for the lead in GTLM, Lawrence Van Tuer is all over the BMW of Conor de Filippi. So that's not over. They're into the first hairpin. And we've still got the battle at the front of the field in GT Daytona, Bergmeister didn't pit, Bergmeister didn't pit, he's staying out and he's still ahead of Blake of Orland, but the battle is now for the lead in GT Daytona, <laughs> extraordinary stuff, uh, GT Le Mans, excuse me. Yeah, that's right, the, the first and second into turn five. Well, well, well. Colin Brown, by the way, now 15 seconds behind Pete Durrani, put a shoe in for second place. That's been another great run by Court. Not quite able to repeat their last two victories. Shea Adam, seven accurate back to pit lane. It is, and even though it's crabbing quite badly, Ricky Taylor managing to get it in. They're putting the car up on an air jack. There's not time enough to fix it, but they can still do a practice for Petit Le Mans. This is a team that wants to win championships, so they are getting ready to do that next year. Yeah, not a great first season. Lightest of contact again with the right rear onto the 63 Ferrari of Gunnar Jeanette. Dear done is what I'm hearing from Shea Adam. That car will drop down to 10th position overall and in the prototype category. Now, what about the battle for second in GTD? Is York Burmeister holding on? Yes, he is. Get the feeling that Brian Sellers might try and take a position here, if he can, from your own Blake Morland, who's piggy in the middle at the moment. 35 seconds to go. These guys are about to start their last lap. Pete Modurani is on his last lap. Two and a quarter miles to go to find out who will be second, third and fourth in GTD. Just under that for De Filippi and Van Tua. Less than a second between those two on their final lap. ESM have got this one wrapped up. So long as Pete Modurani can get it to the line. He's coming out the final corner. And it's going to be Tequila Patron's day. Raise the glasses. Start the pot. Oh, no, that's final lap. Excuse me, final lap. Time has elapsed. So one more lap to go. By, by about a half a second. Right, OK. <laughs> I'd almost given it to people to Rani. That means we've got an extra lap of action from GT Le Mans and probably from GT Daytona because people doesn't need to lap them. As through goes the BMW. And where is Van Tua? Not close enough is the answer. He's 1.8 seconds back. We've got Yakiman between them now. Oh, this could be interesting. Parent, 4.6 seconds to the good in GT Daytona. But Bergmeister, Blake, Amolin and Sellers are all there. If there's a cough or a splutter from Bergmeister on a fuel-saving run, he'll be swallowed up by Bergmeister and Blake, Amolin. We thought he was coming to the pits. He stayed out. He's gambling. Two corners to go for people to Rani. What a great run. Not a great finish for the two car. Had to retire after they were knocked out of contention. But people to Rani anchors home the 22. And now pop the corks, pour the drinks. Tequila Patron, cheers mate, 
Let's take the victory. Great stuff from Durrani. Carving his way through at the end. Colin Brown, another fabulous run for Court Autosport. He's second with Montoya in third. Harry Tinknell right there. Well, they dropped back three seconds at the end in GT Le Mans. Back-to-back -back wins for wow. BMW. Conor De Felipe makes it home when his team car that stopped on the same lap couldn't do it. Van Tour on the podium for Porsche. And championship leading Antonio Garcia will be in third position in GTD. A big, big championship result for Catherine Legg and Alvaro Parent as the 86 car will come through. Shit, Adam, where are you? For the man who has a California flag on his belt, more so than the American flag, Johannes Van Overbeck, home territory, second win here since 2014. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. What a weekend. Um, I uh, really have to thank uh, ESM Patron for putting together such a great day today. They really uh, helped me out this week. I got really sick. Uh, I missed all day yesterday. and just coming back today but nothing makes you feel better than a win yeah go get some champagne this is wine country but today it's tequila country congrats thank you very much Jay. the drinks are on asm this evening that's the start of a big big party in there final couple of races as part of the imza family johannes van overbeck did his job and then people durani stunning 10.9 seconds and cruising at the end to a 123. Colin Brand driving through the field. John Bennett got the tactics absolutely right again today. Got him in, did the laps behind the safety car when they were available and then got Colin in. Uh, third place for Juan Montoya gets a Penske Acura on the podium. Pushed all the way by Harry Tinknell who had to lift off at the end. His uh, last lap put him 3.4 seconds behind Juan Montoya. Then the first of the Cadillacs was Felipe Naza for the championship leader, the 31 car. Let's go down to BMW, two on the bounce, and two on the bounce for the 25 of Conor de Felipe and Alexander Sims. Two in a row at WeatherTech Raceway, Laguna Seca for Bobby Rahal's team as well, and Alexander didn't get to chat with you after VIR, but now we get the opportunity to say, congrats, how nerve wracking is it to watch your car coming home for a win? That was very nerve wracking, you know. Um, it just seems to have worked out most of the time that I've been in the car when we're finishing the races, um, when I won that last year and this year. And so to, yeah, to watch it, see how the fuel strategy played out, see how Connor was doing such an awesome job, uh, keeping his lap times down and, and fuel saving. Uh, fantastic, fantastic job by him and the team to, to get that win. Just how close was it on fuel? Your teammate had to stop. Yeah, no, we took a, a, a call very, very early in that last stint to uh, to try and stretch the fuel. And it was, yeah, just down to Connor's, Connor's awesome effort. Mega job, congrats. Cheers, thanks very much. Well, that's exactly the thing that you have to do. No point in trying to save fuel with 10 minutes to go. Uh, if you're going to do it, do it over the whole one hour stint. And that was done to perfection by Connor de Felipe. Magnificent stuff for the Ray Hall Latin and Lanigan team. And. A uh, sigh of relief from Bobby Rahal because he is here this weekend, so that means he can't come back, Jeremy, because he wasn't there for the, wee, the, the race win at VI. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well deserved a win for uh, that team again here. Really good performance again. Strategy, they called it absolutely perfectly. And we'll speak to the winners in the GT Daytona category. Alvaro Parent coming home after a great stint early on by Catherine Legg. She dropped down to fourth from pole position, wasn't phased. Got her way back to the lead, and Parent brought it home. Shea Adam is our Connell Tire pit lane reporter. That's going to be a very happy Catherine Leg. First pole position and another victory for the 86, Shea. Yeah, it will be, and she's not even down by the car yet, but Alvaro just pulled it in, and so we'll give him a second to take his helmet off and get a chat with him. There is a smile that you can see in his eyes for the Portuguese. So uh, I'll let you know when he's got his helmet off and he's ready to talk, John. Thank you, Shea. Don't forget, get your questions in now. Hashtag Michelin PRT, post-race tech starting. Once we've finished our main post-race interviews on RST, part of the IMSA radio, uh, IMSA radio, part of the RSL radio pl platform, broadcast platform, and uh, we'll stay with you for a few moments more in vision and sound and also on the PA till we've talked to all of our winners before we 
uh, hand off the PA here. Gives me a chance to say to everybody at uh, WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca, thank you for a great weekend again. One of my favourite places to come, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks for Ren Sport. Uh, let's go down to our GTD uh, winners. Alvaro Perent brought the car home. Al, it's a nice thing. GTD winner, hello, and congratulations. You just won at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. How's it feel? Uh, it feels great. I mean, um, I think we did the perfect job uh, this weekend, me, Kat, the team. I mean, uh, thank you to, to Meyer Shank Racing. Um, Ryan, our engineer, we, we um, sorted out the setup, prepared qualifying, prepared the race. I mean, uh, big congratulations to the team. Uh, a little bit of a hiccup there in the middle, uh, but, uh, but look, really happy, and uh, we really deserve this one our thanks to Acura our car was working very 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 well so um, we had to win this race really good one and that's exactly what you did so congrats thank you very much Jeremy and I thought that my shank uh, team had uh, taken a, uh, a, a big risk there by staying out as long as they did but what that did do was enable Alvaro to go out for his final stint on fresh tires and uh, he had such an advantage he was able to make that those passes but uh, I think it was a it was slightly I don't, I'm not going to say it was fortunate because it was a brilliant performance all weekend by that team. See if we can have a quick word with Brian Sellers who drove very smartly there. We'll give you the championship positions in just a moment but uh, su suffice to say Brian Sellers and Madison Snow still leading at the, uh, in the GTD category at the end of this race. I'll give you the full numbers in a moment from Jeremy. Smart driving from Brian today, shit. For Brian Sellers, championship had to be on your mind today. Looking at the competition winning the race doesn't feel great, but you guys still got fourth place points. You okay with that going into Petit? No, I, not at all, really. But, I mean, to be honest, championship wasn't on my, <laughs> my mind at all. Um, you know, I thought that, uh, we, you know, we had a, a good race car uh, compared to everybody but the 86. They were super strong. I don't think anybody could do anything with them. Um, but I could see uh, Jorg in front of me and, and Jerome in front of him, and I knew Jorg's tire situation a little bit. Um, and I, I thought for a, w a little bit there, maybe you know we could have something to finish first, second. Uh, but you know, in the end, we just uh, just weren't strong enough. So um, uh, it's tough. I mean, we we still go into the final one with the championship lead. But you know, if they run like that, then it won't matter what anyone else does. Well, you can put this weekend behind you now and head home for your home track. So good luck uh, when we see you in a few weeks in Atlanta. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hashtag Michelin PRT to at IMSA Radio. We'll pick some off the uh, Radio Show Limited and Midweek Motorsport Listeners Collective Facebook sites as well. Let's start with GT Daytona then, if you uh, don't mind, Jeremy, uh, having spoken to the uh, one half of the team that I think are still leading going into the final race of the year, but with their lead cut back a wee bit. No, cut that back substantially. It was a 13-point lead. It's now just a six-point lead oh. going into the championship finale. And and uh, Brian there, he's got to uh, he's got to get himself on, on the right mental plane uh, to go into uh, Road Atlanta because we heard from him yesterday. He sounded really, really downbeat. You can't go into a race with that frame of mind. Uh, so he's got to uh, get, get, get that straight. Uh, but they, they still do lead, but it's 303 points now. Uh, to uh, Brian Sellers and Madison Snow to, to 297 of Catherine Legg. Uh, as far as the prototypes are concerned, it's uh, closed right up. Let's hear from Colin Brown from the 54 Court Autosport car. John uh, started the car, but Colin finished it and finished it well. And I'll give you the championship. I think four points off the championship lead now, Jeremy, uh, for Colin Brown. Yeah? Well, let's start with John, because it was you in the opening stint. You came to a stop out on the racetrack. That was because you knew that the minimum drive time wasn't yet met, correct? There was nothing wrong with the car, obviously. Well, actually, we were having a little bit of, of uh, electrical difficulty, and, and there was a, you know, it was a crossing period of, you know, should we just go ahead and take a moment and, and look at it, or should we uh, watch the drive time? And so I pulled over, reset the dash, and uh, Jeff said, hey, your, your drive time is done, and, and so in, in I went. Well, that's a happy miracle for that to work out. It's, it's, uh, it, it was a crazy start. Obviously, a lot of yellow and a lot of, uh, a lot of tension and passion at the start. And uh, it's quite interesting. A lot of carbon fiber on the ground. That's one good way to put it for Colin. It was not another win, but another podium and more important championship implications going in. The five scoring no points moves you guys up a little bit. Are you thinking that it's attainable to take the championship home at Petit Le Mans? Yeah, who knows? I mean, we're just going to do what we've been doing all year, just keep trying to get better and work on our car. Um, you know, 
it's going to be what it's going to be. The BOP is going to be what the BOP is going to be, and so we're just going to keep our heads down. Uh, you know, I think certainly today uh, we had reasonable pace and clean air, but uh, really struggle racing with these guys. Uh, we just, you know, really struggle in the power department. Uh, we're able to be smart, make good pit stops, have good in-laps, out-laps. You know, John did a great job just staying out of trouble, and we end up, you know, bubbling up to the top. But, um, you know, I don't think it's certainly on pure pace and performance. So, um, you know, we'll keep our heads down, keep working, go to Road Atlanta, and, um, you know, see what we can do. It's always fun to, uh, to drive these cars, and, and uh, Road Atlanta is going to be no different. Good job today to both of you guys. Thanks. So the prototypes then, Jeremy, uh, it is four points, the gap between first and second? Indeed, it is. 254 for Philippe Nasser and Eric Curran, and 250 now for John Bennett and Colin Brown with that second place finish today. Uh, and a quick look at uh, GT Le Mans, still the lead for Garcia and Marks, yes? Yeah, by, uh, by nine points now, 299 for over Richard Westbrook and Ryan Briscoe. Thank you to Jeremy Shaw and to Shea Adam, our Continental Tire Pit Lane reporter. Uh, we'll be back in early uh, October for the Petit Le Mans finale. I'll be back here in a couple of weeks' time for Ren Sports. Stay tuned to RS2 IMSA Radio Post Race Tech. Michelin Post Race Tech is next. My, we've got some things to talk about. Thank you to everybody at WeatherTech Raceway, Laguna Seca. It's been another great race. Once it's settled down, we had some proper racing. Need to have a word with one or two of the drivers at the start. But we got the race we expected. And you'll hear the finale of the season live on IMSA Radio and IMSA TV. Bye-bye, everybody.